Hello, everyone. Welcome to the live reading. Um, from what I heard, you guys knew that I was uh, <laughs> I was sleeping five minutes ago. Hey, guys, how's it going? Late. You can. You know what? No. All right. Here we go, Derwin. Um, yeah. Just because this. Mm -hmm. All right. There's one timeout already. There's another timeout. There's one more. Okay. Hi, guys. How's it going? Welcome to live readings. Um, woke up like five minutes ago. Yeah, uh, we're going to get right into the readings today. We're going to be reading chapters 34 through chapter 36. So things are going to really be kicking up for the story. And I do apologize for <laughs> kind of a rough start this morning. But let's get introduced and familiarized with the cast. We have some new faces today that you guys are going to meet. And yeah, what we normally do is just introduce everybody from top to bottom. And if this is your first time on the live readings, we also kind of try to interact with chat here and there. If you are gracious enough to donate, subscribe, or if you are a member or become a member during our readings, we will be reading that in between chapters. We do brief chapter discussions and try to keep you guys as engaged as possible. So without further delay, let's get right into introducing the cast. So going from top to bottom, I believe Hunter would be first then. I I, I will just but, say, Hunter, I wouldn't um, actually I wouldn't say your like, name. Yeah. Say, say your name, yeah. Say your just name say and my... say you're going to be a character. Yes. Okay, so my actual name. Okay, so I am Hunter, uh, and that's it. <laughs> He's, yeah, they're playing a character. Yep, I'm playing a Welcome character Hunter. today. <laughs> Indeed. All right. Best, best yeah, character. Hunter. Best character. Really Shut the it. fuck up, you Capella Sim. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, hello. I'm Jace. Who, who are you? Who are you playing? Who is, who's your character? Hello, all you meat creatures. I'll be playing Capella. <laughs> Hog. All right. Uh, that Capella voice is just perfect. It's incredible. LD. And is my mic okay today? Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, it sounds good. Uh, hey, everybody. I am Tealdi. I will be playing Best Girl Krush. So, yay! Ayo Swole, how's it going, man? I'm gonna be honest, I didn't think I was introducing because I'm just here, but uh, hi, I'm Swole. Uh, I do art for this sometimes. Uh, I'm literally just here. I'm probably gonna be discussing stuff. I don't know. How far are you in the story? Uh, I'm at like chapter 51, I think. Okay, cool. Next up. Oh, wait, that's me, right? Yeah, that's you. Hey, guys, I'm Super. I'll be playing Garth. Hi everyone, I'm Hollow. We're playing Julius, Kid Narrator. <laughs> I'm Kyle. <laughs> For now it says Kid Narrator. I'm V Kid and a narrator. <laughs> you just Hi. reminded me the overlay isn't on. Now it is. Okay, Wulu, I think you're next. Hello everybody. I am uh, just a humble Wulu, and I'll also just be a humble narrator today. Uh, hello, I'm Drad, and I will be narrating and perhaps stepping in for a few roles later on. Narrator Kel, is that your name? Yeah, Narrator Kel. Nice. All right. Um. Okay. Yes, yeah, Subaru's there. All right. Whatever. Um. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I'm uh I'm Wolf. I play Subaru, and I'm being British for once and actually drinking tea. Dude, I Hi. need something Yay, to wake me. So. Introduce yourself, Ricardo, and I'll say my stuff. I am the eagle of the light, the lightning eagle, dog man, old man today. Uh, hopefully you all enjoy. Great. This is... You're going to knock it out of the park, man. You're going to do... So who's um who's covering Wilhelm for today? Uh, I think it's me. So Shut I just have like to leave a little earlier I... than... Uh, I can narrate to Cal. <laughs> you can Hollow, jump in if you like. Oh my god, Hollow sounds different. Legit. Yes, this is my morning voice. Literally, you sound different. My morning. <laughs> Give me. Hello, finally in man Everyone sounds voice. different when they first wake up. I'm not joking. I legitimately woke up, looked at my clock, and I'm like, "Oh, cool, yeah." And I was like, "Oh shit, we're live in five minutes." And I like sprinted out of the bedroom and came here. Yeah, I'm. I'm legitimately not alive right now but you guys all sound good for um for balancing um who's going to be narrating chapter 
Me. My brain's not alive yet. Chapter 30, 34. We have it all set up, Hollow. We picked it. Oh! Yep. It's going to be Drad, Wulu, than me. I love theater. Okay. Let me. Do you, do you need, like, maybe take, like, maybe two minutes to clear your throat? You are in the first chapter. I know I am. It's fine. I think I'm ready to, all right. to read. It's. I'm uh, sorry. wait, sorry. sorry. I need. I, uh, I Jason's just setting up music. Yeah. No worries. Oh my god. could go make tea. I. I could do a lot of things right now, Kyle's. It's it's okay. Take a couple minutes <laughs> so and like make some hollow. coffee. <laughs> Built different. True. Some some coffee some coffee might be might be good. As as Swole Jita would say, I'm built different. Oh, you guys missed you know, it. The, hollow was I a know few the five seconds ago. Were you guys like freaking out? Mm. Nah, no. I was just gonna make fun. That was about it. Oh, you were making fun. Jokes. Fuck yes. you. Okay. I was worried that your fire or your house finally caught on fire. <laughs> or that. No, Lightning We're wasn't worried about, about that. that. I don't believe that. The construction that. drill finally won. Come on, guys. I said <laughs> I was worried. I don't believe Lightning has any sympathy towards me. Lightning did. <laughs> Lightning did. He did. He did, yeah. Oh, oh. Grab some tea and... Does my voice sound that different? It's just yes. lower. You sound pretty different, yes. You, you finally sound... sound like you're in the man territory. Good job. You sound <laughs> incredibly tired. You actually sound like you you have hit people. Yeah. So yesterday, we did the live stream. I passed out for half hour, went to work, came back home, uh, helped Nugget with her stream, fell asleep, did my own stream, fell asleep again. Woke up at 4 a.m., fell asleep again stupidly. I should have just stayed up from 4. But you just set another alarm that's louder and you allow yourself to sleep. I don't set Still. alarms because they don't wake me up. Get me up. an alarm that can hit you. And then I think it's because I didn't up. listen to rain noises falling asleep last night. Are you serious? That, it, oh, it, I it love, might be. oh, I love rain noises. I right. told you. It's necessary. Let me, let me just get the images set up so that we don't have any artwork from the... From... Artist today, no. Okay, thank God. Uh, okay. Guys, I swear, here on the Holographic YouTube channel, we are professionals. All of us, <laughs> except for Lightning. But, you know. You're just going to be a freak <laughs> yeah. to me. Yeah. Yeah. I, yes. If anyone here is a professional, it's just uh, not, uh, not uh, early. Uh, not on time. <laughs> Why me That's the first like time in, like, four months I've slept for that long. I'm taking the piss. Jesus. Okay, I need to. You're just mad at me for calling him a capella simp. No, I don't. I'm, I don't mind that. I'm mad at you for taking the piss that I actually had sleep for once in my life. Hello. I'm telling you to sleep. I was the one saying you should sleep. Okay, okay. Shush, 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 Give me a hot Actually, second. Fuck. Go fucking do it, mate. Shut up. Why? Carry chat. I love all of you. Bye. Love you the too. The professionals are the artist. True. So, fun, fun wolf fact. I've not really drunk tea many times before this, so I actually quite oh, like really? it. So i become a habit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's a godsend when you're voice acting. Oh, yeah. It's a godsend when My you're voice acting. Yeah. I... <laughs> Best kind of tea is vanilla Earl Grey oh, no. or vanilla yeah, that's mint. Good. Nah, I, vanilla, vanilla tea is vanilla the best chai. tea. Uh, vanilla, vanilla tea, best vanilla chai. chai? Yeah, chai vanilla chai. One at a time. Yes, that's my jam. Holy fuck, I love the chai. The only tea I've been drinking that's not really a tea is Arizona's. That's basically it. <laughs> <laughs> juice. I love juice yep. too. Wolf, you're not British. You do not drink tea, mate. I'm like the least British British person alive. Like, imagine. <laughs> I'm more British. Maybe that's than why you. we can tolerate you. She's my nationality. <laughs> no. You're not what Satan happened? spawn. You're only somewhat subhuman. Damn. Oh, <laughs> I don't quite like the British. How much tea do you drink a year? Uh, only about like a, a gallon. Only a gallon? <laughs> uh, no, get, give me your British card. Hand it over. This is my first cup of tea this year. Wow, <laughs> you lost your British privileges. <laughs> no British. Well, how the hell am I more British than you? Well, I like to think of it as, uh, you know, I can't be bothered to spend four minutes of my life to brew a cup of tea. <laughs> well, that's a real Fair idea. enough. <laughs> yeah. You'd rather be focusing that time on making incredibly bland food. 
Damn. Mate, Why are you going to hit us like that? I, 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 would, I would be offended, yeah, but I, I eat what I can to survive, okay? This is my mentality. I mean, I respect Flash it. Like, I think the food that Wulu makes looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Thank you. No, Wulu. Cuisine. Cuisine, indeed. Fun fact, I happen to be gluten and dairy free also. Yay, dairy free. Damn. Epic. I would be dairy free, but I like mac and cheese, so like. Oh, yeah, I, I risk it for mac and cheese. I try to go vegan, but that's too hard, so. I just... Maybe Wolf prefers Eastern tea. I can't afford Eastern tea. <laughs> what is instant tea? Eastern. Oh, Eastern, yeah. You know, back at like one of the malls we had, there was just like a whole tea shop. Like it was just crazy. Like everything was in there. They were selling like really fancy pots and stuff like that. Well, I, like, I really need to start green because that sounds like the <laughs> shit. <laughs> the only tea is, is basically been like Arizona's for me, and then they used to have like this really nice orange tea at Starbucks. I don't remember what it was called. I think it was like Passion. Oh yeah, Passion tea. Yeah, 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 yeah. We sold that, and then it got canceled when we bought out Tivana. <laughs> Uh, Let's get straight into the readings ten minutes later. How am I more British than you, Wolf? <laughs> I'm slightly more alive, I think. <laughs> Yay! You sound, sound better. Yes. Hey, hello. I guess I splash water in my face and I, I'm making tea right now. I'm very pissed yeah, off. Yeah. I don't have like water Earl Grey or English breakfast, and I want to cry. Aww. Chug a cup of just scalding hot coffee. Did I just hear Pat, by the way, or am I losing my mind? No, you didn't I hear think... that. I'm yeah, losing my losing mind. It. I'm hallucinating. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure you imitated Pat's voice. So I don't know how yeah. you came. It's to the me, Pat Curly. <laughs> I'm the teacher. <laughs> I love the teacher. You know, Top of the you. Teacher. <laughs> no, I love oh, the way he says fear. All right. Hollows live, yeah. Um, a hollows, hollow lives, yeah. <laughs> Not for long, buddy. We're just this glad is better than the, the lust if pro. I'm, I am going into this like ripping the bandaid off, dude. I don't know what the hell I'm reading. So if there's any lines like yesterday, screaming fucking uh, fall Goa, <laughs> I'm fucked. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna be alive for much longer when I get my hands on you, buddy. Oh my god, why is Julia seeing like a fucking diatribe right at the start? What? Oh, stop <laughs> complaining! Oh. I have so many more lines than you. Shut up. If I bend Same. my knee and lose my sword, what is left for me? Hey, I got some. I don't too, fucking yeah. know. Go die and shut up already. You don't it get to complain. Have you seen my you? lines? His impressions are so terrible. Hey, yo, what's poppin', baby? My name Grill. Hey, yo, what's poppin', baby? My name Grill. What's poppin', baby? My name Grill. Ultimate power. <laughs> I can't, I can't chug it, caffeine. I've done that before, and it gave me like. Is it weird? The biggest yeah. headache. Is it weird? Is it weird if I think that like I don't actually have a lot of lines as a narrator? Uh, <laughs> are you okay? Just you wait, um, Wulu. Just you wait. I think just maybe just you should be breaking this there and okay. watch me burn. We get started, everyone. It's all right. You stole right, tea from us South awesome. Asians. We were the OG tea connoisseurs. Okay. Right. Well, you know, <laughs> empire and shit. All right. That. The worst thing that's going to happen is if we're Matt Kuhn dies on me. That's not... Yeah. Don't jinx it. Praying for Matt Kuhn. Let's pray for Matt Kuhn. Let's pray for this head on. All right. All right. Just shuts down. All right. I believe in the power of friendship. You know what? Let's just... Yeah. You know what? Let's just go. And all you need is the power of friendship. Oh my gosh, right. that's my kettle. Okay, I'm gonna turn that off. It's so loud. Yes, but typically it. kettles are quite loud, Hollow. Well done. Does he not have push to talk? No. Wow. No, he just leaves it on. This has always been a thing. Yeah. No, Hollow is just. I it's just. You are excused. Yeah. Well, Mac not we'll using a Mac, Mac, but still. Off of a cliff <laughs> and we'll all be happy. That needs to be a video. Oh, I'm getting rid of my Maxon. What the hell? I can't even keep up with this. Yo, maybe send your Maxon to Hollow. He can like duct tape that Mac to his Mac. Hopefully, it will run. I am double the Mac, double the power. It's a big Mac. Oh, we have 200. Wait, we have 200 viewers. Let's go. Let's start. Let's. We have to start. All right. Oh shit! Oh fuck! Oh shit! Oh fuck! Everyone. Okay, so sorry. One more time is narrating this since I'm brain dead right now. Oh, dude, Pog. Uh, Drad. Yeah, Drad. Serenate me with your voice. I'll try not to disappoint. Yeah, I think Kyle's, I think. 
Drad, yeah. hit me hit me with that that ass. fucking sexy voice, my guy. Like right now or when I'll be reading. You're never the first one. Right? Yep. Yeah, um if we're all ready to go, I'm ready to roll. If you guys wanna yep. get it and get right into the news. Let's go! All right. Let's fucking so, go. Three, two, one. Someone disconnected. Oh well. Three, two, one. Arc five. Chapter thirty. Four, swordplay and melee. Standing on the rooftop of City Hall, a black dragon flaunted its wings at Swoot's group below, opening its mouth to reveal rows of sharp teeth and a long, snaking red tongue. The black dragon narrowed its golden eyes, continuing to issue a laugh so high-pitched it caused physical pain. That black dragon's appearance was more or less exactly how Suru had imagined the dragon species. Patrasha's sharp and awe-inspiring face was very much dragon-like, but her make, mane, and physique were not. Earth dragons were on average comparable in size to a horse, while the dragon overhead was closer to an elephant. With that figure, the black dragon could not possibly be capable of flight. Perhaps its strong wings were merely served as a bluff. Yes, flight should be impossible. Being ravished by your heated days isn't exciting at all, you meat creatures in heat. Ah, this is awful, being seen by people like you who can only think of sexual gratification, so I won't approach you. Fanning its wings towards the ground, a gust of wind strong enough to make one's body tremble whipped. A long tongue fitting outward as if licking her lips, the black dragon, Capella, gave a twisted smile. That dragon's expression was incredibly chilling. Perhaps because of the language barrier, communication was heavily dependent on interpretation. But Trashy was a good example of that. She came off as quite likable because of her gracious attitude not to let emotions show on her face. On the other hand, one could not help but be disgusted by the dragon in front of them for how humanly it behaved. I haven't heard any mentions of this before, but can dragons speak? As they have lived for a long time, dragons are extremely intelligent and can understand human language. As a matter of course, it seems that the divine dragon Volcanica, who forged a covenant with the kingdom, can of course communicate with us through language, even though I do not know if it would reveal this much emotion. Julius, from a distance, gave a detailed answer to Suru's question. The finest of knights had his blade raised at shoulder height, eyes never leaving the black dragon. Of course, Subaru and the other four were in the same state. In front of them were two swordsmen of outstanding strength, and above, there was a black dragon who had named herself the Archbishop of Lust. Their original needs had compounded to a wall of tension. At the least, we have a chance of dealing with the swordsman. The woman, wielding her longsword in an airy flaw in posture, and the giant waved his swords around as if refamiliarizing himself with the blades. Although the extent of the swordsman, swordswoman's strength was still unknown, the giant had chosen to directly take Ricardo's attack. Needless to say, it was not because of any clumsiness, but because he had a strategy in mind. Knowing that any damage would be regenerated, long-range attacks, their earlier plan would still be incredibly effective. However, that would only work if six people tried their best to have the attack connect. Is there anyone here who's fought a dragon? Yes. Wilhelm son? Seriously? Although Suwer had thought his question hopeless, Wilhelm had responded with a low voice. The old swordsman turned to face the surprised Subaru. Nearly 40 years ago, I was sent to subjugate an evil dragon named Balgin, who appeared to the south of Lagunica. The concentration of forces caused much diplomatic tension because of the proximity to Valchia. Setting the diplomatic ramifications aside, how was the experience of fighting a dragon? 10% of the Knight Order were totally, uh, which totaled 500 were sent to battle against Vergen. And although the Crusade succeeded, 40% of the knights died. Thus, uh, the Crusades succeeded, but the result of uh, but the result was a disaster. Its fiery breath, its endless stamina, and the vulnerability of a swordsman in midair are all things we should have taken better consideration. 
It would seem that our situation is even more desperate. Seeing Sulu's despair, although Wilhelm prevailed. Bergen was one of the most uh, difficult beings to fight, truly worthy of being called a dragon. Compared to it, this is too small to be called a dragon. It should be dead upon beheading. And Falcon did not? Falcon had a total of three heads, which all needed to be removed. Having finished speaking of that distant tango of death, Willem tightened his grip on his sword. So, beheading would sternly kill it. That was reassuring. Seeing Wilhelm's well-prepared stance, Subaru also took up a battle pose, whip in hand. Seeing their refusal to yield, the Black Dragon Cabela seemed rather surprised. My, my, my! You're all so disgusting! You're beaten and miserable, and, aside from my reinforcements, you're facing a sin archbishop! You rotten creatures should hang your head and heads and channel the meekness of insects, and yet you're acting all normal! What's putting you with all the other insects wrong? <laughs> Stop fucking around! What can you even do against our numbers? My amazing self will go up there and crush ya! <laughs> the barking of this rabid dog is hurting my graceful ears! Or rather, I made a mistake. You're no rabid hound. You're only a puny kitten. Meow, 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 meow. Don't be angry just because the kid you were with died. What? <laughs> Faced with those cruel jabs, Garfield shouted but choked on his own response. The dragon was clearly referring to Garfield's earlier defeat, where he had almost been beaten to death. This, added to the details of what happened with, to Mimi, meant that Capella had been watching the fight, and what surprised Garfield even more... Bastard. How did you know my amazing self's a demi-human? Huh? How do I not know that? I mean, how do I know that? Don't think so highly of yourself. Not even a single one of your hairs interests me. I could tell that you were a filthy half-breed from the moment I saw you. You're not making a mockery out of me, then you're a fool! Too stupid to die! Speaking unspeakably cruel curses, Capella turned towards the rest of the party, snorting. Such stench! Such stench! You slabs of meat all snow rotten! Wrinkled old meat! Meat that feigns cleverness! Hairy beast meat! Ah, disgusting! Oops! Capella, constantly giving her toxic comments, turned her gaze slightly in Crochet's direction. A sticky, feverish light entered her squinted eyes as she poured all of her attention upon Cruch, who subconsciously held herself tightly. When Cabela spoke, her voice was almost pleasant. But mixed with all that refuse is quite the piece of meat. So beautiful, so cute, such a nice scent, perfectly in line with my taste. It looks immoral. What beauty, that body, that appeal. Ah, I really, really, really want to break it with my own two hands. That's enough. Huh? Had she become completely fascinated, her expression trance-like, the black dragon stared towards Krush as if wanting to lick her from top to bottom. At this moment, the rising pressure of anger interjected to interrupt her. Her attention still fixed on Krush, the black dragon looked up impatiently. And before her wide open eyes, Julius entered the scene waving the tip of his sword much like an orchestra's conductor. Be burned by my six-fold light, El Pralium! Julius's six quasi spirits formed a circle overhead, each gleaming with a different color as it fired a multicolored beam of light upward. The rainbow beam turned white at the point of impact, Capella, and she began to scream because of the direct hit. <coughs> this is the price of your chatter. If you had any real skill, you wouldn't spout such nonsense. Obeying Julius's command, the quasi spirits continually fired the scorching light. With Gabella's piercing scream serving as background music, the two swordsmen had been silent and still, suddenly knocked off the slate ground, flying towards Subaru's group. Stop there! Like hell you won't! Here, Garfield and Wilhelm both spoke up. Wilhelm flew sword straight towards the swordswoman, while Garfield faced the giant's twin blades with his own twin shields. Don't leave. Show me your sword play. 
As she began to retreat after meeting its first blow, Willem cut her off with a sudden strike. The old swordsman breakthrough was... The old swordsman's breakthrough struck up and down with the violence of a storm. The length of her longsword was not proper to quick action, which served her defense poorly as Wilhelm lashed out rapid strike after strike. Even so, the woman also proved fearsome. She cleverly shied away from any swing that was unable to parry with her clever foot placement and smoothly, with practiced ease, regained her balance. Each time her whirling sword snapped forth, it became more and more apparent that the female swordswoman's body was molded to hold the sword she was using. Wilhelm's skill had been enough for him to challenge the white whale, and now stood at the level. But the woman's outstanding talent and skill was enough to impress Wilhelm back. Uh. Issuing a roar with momentum smooth as silk, Wilhelm's reaction of cuts and swings increased in speed. Who would laugh at the old man now? His swordplay was the pinnacle of swordsmanship. His sword captivated the eyes of many young would be inspired to pick up the blade and follow his example. His blade a mere flash, it killed the air itself, it killed the ground itself, and to embed the tip of its blade into the woman's body. Still silent, the woman was prepared, and each strike would help the old man's blade, which had been sharpened for years. Without words, without righteousness, the woman was like a doll whose only purpose was battle. A doll that swung its sword according to the rotation of its ears, according to the fighting genes engraved in her body. She killed the air, she killed the sky, she killed the ground itself, and mercilessly parried the braids approaching her. A quiet sword fight that did not seem to be purely a battle of steel against steel. The sword must have been light, much lighter than the old man's. However, each side's sword blade was clean and pure, and aside from strikes on their respective targets, no unnecessary destruction happened. That was the beautiful realm of the sword, at a most honorable one to reach, for the beings who live the life of a swordsman and of using the blade. The two waged their silent battle with repeated collisions, their swords only being seen as flashes. This was the sacred realm of the sword itself, and intruders could not be tolerated. Not far away, another battle unfolded. <laughs> Roaring muscles flexing, earth being trodden, and flesh echoed. Stuck with dizziness, ignoring the hit he had suffered, roaring at the feeling of hitting back his opponent, spinning out the bloody vomit due to the feeling of having his internal organs crushed, rebelling against his opponent's power to pulverize his very bones. Unlike the elegant duel taking place next to them, the battle between Garfield and the giant was one marked by chaos. Although the giant could be called a swordsman, his fighting style was different from that what, what would that imply. Not sophisticated at all, it was irrational as a barbarian or a mindless beast. Ha! Ah! Correspondingly, Garfield also fought without a sense of etiquette. Garfield's fighting style was wild and animalistic. Due to Sewell's influence, he had named it Garfield no Sentitake Yoshiki. It was an absurd sort of violence that only Garfield, who relied on instinct, could perform. It could not be imitated by anyone. In fact, Garfield's violence and the bar giant's barbarianism really matched well with one another. The savage, straightforward duel was one of stamina, and the battler who reached the limit first would lose. Therefore, the victor and the defeated would become apparent for all to see. Those giant swords were also incredibly heavy that receiving them with only one arm would surely shatter Garfield's elbow, so he needed to use both arms in order to deal with them. However, if both arms were used, nothing could be done about the other giant sword, which meant a direct hit. Therefore, Garfield needed to decisively use his shields to parry those swings. Holding them obliquely, its arm blocked the massive sword, but allowed it to slide along the shield with its momentum, thus deflecting it. Frighteningly, the, gar the giant was not merely wheeling swords wildly and blindly. That barbarian style of battling was savage, but his strikes were shockingly direct and powerful. That could not be achieved with talent alone. That was skill that could only be acquired after the giant had clearly practiced tens of thousands, tens of millions of swings. Taking those split swords with a half back half block would truly be impossible. With the slightest of wrong moves, the giant sword would be 
would cleave the silver shield in half despite its bluntness, and Garfield's body would resemble that of a broken shield. Don't get around no more! Therefore, Garfield had to do everything possible to combat the violence of those large swords. As they slashed from above, he parried. As they swept from the sides, he parried. As they swung up from below, Garfield parried. Then, from a gap, his arm took a punch, forcing Garfield to retreat. The problem was that, in addition to two powerful hands waving large swords, the giant had another six arms. Garfield's defense could be punctured with a third attack, and the giant had started using not two, but three hands to grasp those swords. Garfield had the advantage in speed, but the giant's strength and versatility was far superior. As his chin was struck, he parried a massive sword, and his knees were kicked, sending his face plummeting towards the ground. Four more blows followed this, but Garfield caught himself as he fell, and finally managed to block this attack over an, an, this attack an overhead slash by planting his feet firmly on the ground. Blood, broken bones, and bitter cries, those were what the savage battlefield was filled with. The blood of the people watching boiled, and they could not help but shout. The sound emitted by the clashing of shields and swords was akin to a various percussion instruments being struck, and the sparks playing around akin to fireworks at a live concert. <sighs> on one side was Wilhelm's quiet duel, and on the other was Garfield's roaring war. Sewer and Crush held their breaths, unable to join either battle. It was not due to inability, rather, they were too shocked by the fighting spirit from both sides to react. However, unlike Subaru, who was submerged in such emotions. Ah, uh, this is bad. We gotta act soon. Ricardo, who had been surveying Julie's magic overhead, took a step forward. Seeing Ricardo's movement, Subaru was made right and began to move, but... Subaru-sama! Down! Feeling a sudden yank on his collar, Subaru found himself being dragged to the ground by Krush. Ricardo stood in front of the two, shielding them, releasing a ferocious roar. Uh. The roar created fierce sound waves which shook the atmosphere, creating an invisible force of destruction. The roaring wave was an attack of the same quality as the one Mimi and her younger brothers had used against the white whale. This skill that noticeably injured it, and Ricardo had just unleashed it completely on his own. But being backed by the roar was a glowing black flame that had broken through the white light and swept the ground. The jet black flames rippled frighteningly, causing the heart of those who witnessed them to tremble from its horrifying nature, rather than heat, as everything they touched crumbled to dust. The black flames that were intercepted by the roar's sound waves were dispersed with ease, being scattered all over the square. However, the real horror of the flames was only discovered after they hit the ground. That fire... Is it coming out? Black ash fell towards the slate ground, still burning without any sustenance. Despite this, the flames continued to burn, spreading to the surroundings. Even more scary was the fact that any fire that had fallen on the surface of the water also continued to burn, like dripping burning oil onto the water. The fire continued to assert its existence. Oh. How long are you planning to stay like that? Really... Uh, doesn't this kind of thing usually happen in reverse? Subaru, no matter how you look at it, being protected by a woman is... Ricardo and Julius both offered discouraging words to Subaru, who was still recovering from the terror of the scattered black fire. Following their line of sight, Subaru discovered that he was laying on the ground with a crush on top of him, shielding him from any damage. What? I am glad that you are unhurt. Please rest assured. I shall refrain from telling Ferris and Amelia about this. I feel even more ashamed of feeling relieved! Crush pulled him to his feet, decreasing Subaru's coolness factor by another 10%. Adding the dust of his bottom, Subaru looked up towards the source of the Black Flame, obviously the Black Dragon, and he frowned. He could sense nothing but from her but a sense of disgust. <sighs> disgusting! Disgusting! Don't look at me with such an aroused gaze! Stop looking! Don't violate me with your dirty eyes! <laughs> it's like they say, you're forbidden from stroking any dancers who perform for you, so stop ravishing this charming lick! <laughs> what the hell? 
despite taking Julius's magic head on, Capella acted as if nothing had happened. However, that was not to say that she had not suffered any harm. In fact, she had suffered considerable visible damage from his attack. The proud dragon's right wing had been scorched off until it was no more than a hanging bloody piece of flesh. Perhaps she had wanted to use the wing to protect her body, but the damage meant that even that had failed. The power of that spell had burned through the black dragon's wings, reaching her body. Her abdomen had been scorched and melted, and her innards seemed to have been boiled until they looked like jerky. The right side of the dragon's head had been blown off, and the tongue that enjoyed ridiculing others had been severed, her eye dangled freely, no longer resting in its socket. Dead would not suffice to describe it, there was nothing but a corpse. Subaru audibly swallowed, Julius and Ricardo frowned, and Krush could not help but give a little girl's gasp. However, that was not because of the dragon's horrific state. Instead, it was due to the fact that the injured flesh was regenerating. Blood vessels wriggled, flesh swelled, bones squeaked, torn fibers sewed themselves together, and Capel's destroyed body regenerated at an alarming rate. In a bizarre scene, the impossible heat given off her regeneration evaporated any remaining trace of blood, creating red steam. Now, having seen my beautiful internal organs, are you satisfied? You perverts are so full of carnal desire that you even want to see the asshole of your favorite piece of meat, aren't you? <laughs> satisfied? Hey, were you so satisfied you started leaking? How? What? What happened? Shouldn't you be able to tell on sight? Do you actually have to ask? How foolish are you? But this benevolent lady shall answer you. As you can see, I'm obviously immortal. Immortal. The simplest, most absolute description of her power. Suru could not help but gear up at Kipala's description of her own power. The thought that she was bluffing crossed his mind. He did not want to believe her words, so it would be comforting to think that she was bluffing. It's nothing but a quick regeneration ability. Call it whatever you want. I'm amazing, and everyone who calls it invincible are idiots. I don't think they're that far from the truth, though. <sighs> my, my, my! You're unable to even talk anymore, you disgusting, rotten pieces of shit! You poop, putrid, filthy meat! Go die! Everyone except me should go die! Wait, wait, wait. Suddenly, Capella interrupted her own hateful words. She unfurled her, unfurled her healed wings and fluttered them, slowly bringing the, her bulky form towards the roof of the city hall. Thinking that she was preferring to Preparing to swoop down upon them, Subaru braced himself for her attack. However... Time's up! I have to go make the next, next broadcast, so I'll go back inside. Talking to you is just a waste of time, and I'm in a hurry! You all just stay here and die, along with that rather lovely piece of meat. Go rot in hell! Huh? Huh? Suddenly losing interest, Capella yawned, dropping the tension. Then, she... Albeit it wasn't really certain if you could call the dragon a she, Capella turned herself around and with heavy footsteps strode into the depth of the city hall, where Subaru lost sight of her. He could not help but consider whether that was meant to lure her enemies deeper, deeper in or not. She might be trying to lure us in. Do you agree? But we cannot allow her to make that broadcast. If we let her go, people in the city are going to start panicking. Shit! Do we have to go inside and chase her like this? He had a bad feeling about it. In the first place, with that size, how did Capella enter the inside of City Hall? Although he did not know how large the broadcast room was, it seemed that Capella would destroy the room with the slightest of her movements. Perhaps she had the witch cult to set up the meteor, set up the meteor up so that all she needed to do was speak. But he did not have the time to consider that right now. Alright, leave the guys on the outside to those two and me. You rush in with Julius Nichan and Cruz Jolchan. Ricardo gave his instructions to Subaru and the others. Uh, Subaru replied with a quizzical gaze, hoping that there was some rationale to that decision. Don't be like that. The swordsmen are a tad too much for you and Cruz. And, I, and I'm, not I'm not suited for indoor action. 
Julius Nichon shouldn't have a single problem with that, don't you think? A very apt judgment. I would have made a similar decision. To be honest, I would be rather worried leaving only Wilhelm and Garfield here. So I shall leave that up to you, Ricardo. Leave it to me, kiddo. Julius and Ricardo nodded to each other. With no time for Sewer and Christian to interject, being from that same faction, perhaps could, they could communicate their intent with only a glance. Subaru was unable to protest, so, scratching his head... Garfiel! You're absolutely not allowed to lose! After you send that guy flying, and we defeat Lust, we're going to save Amelia! You hear me?! Captain! I ain't got time to deal with you right now! Subaru spoke to Garfield, who was still engaged in his chaotic war, and nodded to Julius. Next to him, Crush lifted a hand towards her mouth, aiming her voice in Wilhelm's direction. Wilhelm! I shall leave everything to you! I shall do as you command. Wilhelm gave a brief response to his master's brief words. A true master in vassal exchange only required those brief words. Having shown her intent to go along with the plan, Krush joined Subaru, and led by Julius, they charged towards the city hall. Leaving the central square, the three ran towards the interior of the city hall. The two figures guarding the tower responded to their movement, foregoing their current opponents for, foregoing their current opponents for Stubu's group. Standing in a line like that makes it easier for me. Ha! His ferocious laugh created a destructive sound waves which swept up the stones on the pavement, and the giant and woman faltered slightly with that attack. Although the power of the roaring waves had begun to diminish, they were still effective enough to halt the two. Behind them, their respective dance partners caught up, speaking words of discontent. How discourteous. Ignoring me. I will have, uh, when I have eyes for only you. Don't turn your ass on your opponent unless you want it gone. Ora, ora, ora! Slashing and slicing, striking and stabbing, the chaotic duels in the square continued, fierce battles which allowed for no outside intervention. While hearing the sounds of those ferocious battles, Sulu and his group rushed towards the front entrance of the city hall, waltzing inside without even slowing down. Where would the broadcasting room be? I do not know for certain, but I assume it would be at the uppermost level, for the voice to reach as far as possible. There may be ambushes along the way. Be careful. As the main entrance, they arrived at the reception lobby of the city hall. In times of peace, that place should have been crowded, with a pretty lady providing a reception service and bright lights powering the scene. But now, it appeared to have been ransacked, the lights of the place dimmed to create an ominous atmosphere. Fortunately, there were no other witch cultists occupying this level, nor were the corpses strewn across the room, so... Come on, let's go! There should be some kind of floor map telling us where the room is! If we can, I would also like to confirm the safety of the City Hall staff, although that does not appear to be too greedy right now. What? He checked the help desk and confirmed that no one was hiding there, then pointed to the stairs. Julius responded without a word, glaring back at the lobby, and gently shook his head. Krush followed him with a frown, and upon tracing his gaze, her expression was filled with horror. Seeing her reaction, Subaru went around the reception and joined the two, and placing his games upon the same thing held his breath. With dragging, pitter-pattering steps, a figure appeared. Peeking around the stairs, a child wearing a mischievous smile emerged. At, it, at first glance, he only looked like a child, a petite physique, a childlike face, evoking an image of youthfulness. However, those ideas were only pleasant until taking notice of the boy's eyes. His dark brown hair hung loose, and his body was wrapped with a single cloth, giving him a rather grim appearance. With a devilish smile on his little face, his eyes locked on as it looked as if they contained all the poisons in the world. With decaying glows and toxic liquids, they were, of course, not the eyes of a decent human being. And, in the present circumstances, it was evident what was wrong with him. <laughs> So happy, very happy, so very happy, so very, very happy, because of this happiness, such happiness, incredible happiness, 
Such incredible happiness. Such incredibly incredible happiness. Deserves drinking gluttony. <laughs> the longer you wait for something, the hungrier you get. So the first bite must be delicious to make up for it. Please, happy from the bottom of his heart, the barefoot boy March has a dancing to a beat. As he spoke, he revealed, revealed a snaggletooth, a canine too long that was keeping from his mouth. Seeing that image, that attitude, that exaggerated speech, Sue's mind began to boil. If this was not just his imagination, if that boiling rage didn't even exist, then this was. You, kid, if you're just some naughty kid, who was left behind while playing hide-and-seek, then confess that right away! It's really the case. We'll forgive you, and let you go. Otherwise, hurry up and give your name. <laughs> what do you mean, Oni-chan? You look mad! Are you someone with a grudge against us by any chance? If we could remember, we would! But we're stupid and have bad memory! Speaking in a low voice, Subu deliberately endured the desire to raise his voice. And, as if de deliberately provoking Subaru, the kid twisted his juvenile face into a mocking smile. Are you sure that attitude is really meant for us? Or is it for someone that isn't us? That's enough! I can see that you are my enemy! We are Sin Archbishop of the Witch Cult, representing Gluttony, Roy Alphard. Gluttony! As soon as the child claimed to be Gluttony, Subaru struck with his whip, slashing through the air, his whip mercilessly cut through the wind and on his journey towards the enemy's base. However... Oh well, it's not uncommon to face people who want a bite of us! <laughs> his teeth biting the end of whip, Gluttony spoke brazenly. And that ends Arc 5, Chapter 34. Can we get a warm welcome to Hunter taking the stage for the Hunter. first time? An amazing performance. Fucking great job, guys. Amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> what an entrance. Holy shit. Did my screen there at the end cut out, by the way? No, you're fine. Oh. No, yeah, oh, perfect. Okay. Held awesome. <laughs> Audio Kun held up today. Yay! Matt yes! is holding up still. <laughs> oh, what a... Everyone, amazing job! What a great chapter! Oh, I was chapter. so immersed in this reading today, like for this chapter, amazing job. Drad's voice is very. Drad's voice, you're it's so sexy. Very sexy. Oh my Good. gosh, everything was Thanks. so amazing. It was so immersive. It was so fucking crazy. The first line that Hunter did, that little laugh, fucking chills. Oh my shit! <laughs> shit. Amazing, yeah. Hunter, you did incredible. Yeah, dude, great debut. Hope for you. Thank Hope you. I got across the, uh, <laughs> the uh, you know, rage of hearing Gluttony's name. The super. Yeah. I hope Just I what? got the I'm mocking you across. Yes, you got that <laughs> very well. Yeah, no, I was there. I was definitely there. That was the yep. chat is blowing up for this chapter. I can everyone, look at chat. Everyone did an amazing job. Oh, I'm letting you know. Everyone's been good today. Have they? Have they? Kyle's Miguel's VA for Amelia Ton. Yes. Okay. I've only I've only hit one or two people, and Krill's got one or two people, and They've we're good. They've lightly been bonked. So, Let first off, bonk. this chapter, this chapter, there, there's another one. I think, um, Supa, you made a you could have made a great point in our chat earlier. Uh, specifically, uh, this felt like a uh, Amaterasu. Um, oh my god. Capella specifically. That's what it was. It's exactly. It was a black fire that never goes out. He talked you. What the hell's an Amaterasu? In Naruto, it's uh, an unextinguishable done. black flame that you can use yeah. to incinerate enemies. We, yeah. We, um, apart from some general details, we have something very important to talk about. Yeah, it's so, not um, like Baton Kaidos. It's a. Uh, it's Roy Alphard. Roy Alphard. Yes. There's also one thing I want to bring up. Um, remember how at the uh, at the uh, start of the arc, um. Anastasia said to um Cruchette that uh she knows the uh, whereabouts of gluttony. Uh I don't know, man. Ah, uh, you're right. That does seem a little suspicious since he's it's a little suspicious. Seems a little sus. Here. I'm gonna no. oh, we, murder you. Guys, uh, Roy is in a You, you also know the, the, the implications of this, right? Like they're yes. they're supposed to be Sin Archbishops guarding the towers, but there's another Sin Archbishop at City Hall. With Capella. With Capella. 
Whoopee. How? There are so oh, many Sinnoh fishers friend. in this city right now. This city is fucked. <laughs> fucked. So, so far Capital we've confirmed, F literally, fucked. we have Sirius, we have um, Regulus, we have Capella, and now we have Roy. But there's the fuck also... is Reinhard? <laughs> <laughs> I'm making sausages. No! <laughs> no! So, okay, we have a couple interesting things to talk about here. Uh, first of all, Capella. She took a long-range, really powerful shot Oh, actually, Julius's, I have a question, uh, Wolf. Earlier. Yes. El um, Prelium, what the fuck is that? It's basically like, from what I can tell, it's like a... Right, do you know how um, his other spells like Al Clarista are like a cluster yeah, yeah, yeah. of rainbow? Like, with all the mana types, like, with a sword? It's basically, he funnels it down his sword and shoots it like a ranged attack, and it's so like it's a like beam. it's like a beam? Yeah. Okay. Um, and it, it, like... I'm pretty sure he got a headshot, is how it was described on Capella. But it wasn't Probably. the strongest iteration, right? That wasn't the strongest iteration of that spell that he could I don't use. believe so. No. That was it's Al or Al? Al. Al? Yeah, it's Al. I mean, I mean, like, the way he considered it was that, like, um, if he just did a fatal hit anyway, like, it didn't really matter the strength of the spell, I guess, is what was going through his mind. Right. Unfortunately, as Capella says, she's essentially immortal. <laughs> <laughs> that that yeah, one line oh, that you had to scream, uh... Jace. Because I know yesterday you're like, I, I don't know if, what my parents are going to think screaming that yeah. those lies. Just tell them your voice acting. <laughs> screaming oh, about um... my asshole. This <laughs> <laughs> work. You wouldn't get it, mom and dad. Jace uh, wants to be mod. Hollow. Not a phase. If you type in YouTube chat, Jace, and you pop up, um, Hollow can give you... Oh, um, I have to open... Give me a sec. Mod privilege. It's just um, wow. so Jace can also bring up spoilers. Uh, Capella is insane. Um, I also now know why she has a bunch of simps, but she's just freaking insane. Wow! Why is it all the insane of... women <laughs> get like immortality? First Elsa and now her. It's, it's, it's what it is every single time. You Maybe the price of immortality women, is right? your sanity. Ooh, clearly, if, ooh, at this point, very fair. If I was a witch cultist, I would lose my mind having to interact with you people, like the other people in the witch cult. My God, no way. Now, <laughs> this um. We, yeah, we, we have a bit of a problem. <laughs> uh, so we've just realized another Sin Archbishop here is here, but the implications of... We've just been given a different name for Gluttony. There's no, yeah, two. yeah. Well, they were so, also referring... Roy's also low... referring to as, like, they, us, yeah, we, them, we, plural. We. So we can, right have, we can right. imply loads of stuff. We can either think possibly this is an imposter Gluttony, or... Oh, yeah. Or Gluttony is a hive mind, and they so switch. Because he caught the uh, whip in his teeth, I'm gonna go with the first one. Um, but you can you can keep speculating. But, if you'd like. but Roy, um, from the illustration we've been shown, Roy looks different from Light. Built. I don't know what well. you're talking about. He looks pretty similar. No, like no he looks similar, but facially, but, uh, but like that, he close. still does look different. Yeah, he's got a different thing going on right now. I now. Do you guys, um, we're going to continue on a bit from our conversation from last night. Do you know what the meaning of alpha is? Oh god, is? hold on. If we do that, can we not make it three hours? Please. No, no, it's literally just going to be, um, I'm literally going to tell you what the constellation behind alpha is. You should just explain it then. Just hit it. It's, it. it's Slap the brightest me. star in the constellation of Hydra. Or mm. Snake. <laughs> so, yeah, we already have our, um, so, lie. Whale. Alpha? Mm -hmm. Roy? Snake. <laughs> Bro. Wearing that green. Like... Literally, if like you're in Roy's position and a whip was coming at you, if I tried to bite it, my face would be gone. I don't know how. How the fuck? You're a very brave man to use your teeth. Now, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Chompers. We, we also know that the gluttonies can like, um, well, we know at least lie can eat people, right? Like, eat their memories. I chomp, I and munch, stuff. I chew, I, yeah. Do you, you yeah. do realize the implications of that, right? Like, he gets all the experiences of someone by doing that. Like, if he if he ate, like, two Master Swordsmen. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I, didn't that. I, I got like the memory part of it. That's what it is, man. It's like to eat. <laughs> he Wait, what is is... A, he, could, he oh. could become the perfect warrior, if you think about it. Eating like, is for training. 
Yeah. Goku what do you mean? Could be. I am. What are you talking about? I am. <laughs> 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 I mean, disrespect you like that. Could so, be. You, you 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 the way that the way that things are looking right now, because again, I was supposed to read this chapter last night. I didn't read anything, so I'm going in completely blind here. It looks like we're splitting up fighters to take on different roles throughout you know the various different opponents that we have we don't know where reinhardt's fucked off to we know that no. regulus and sirius are still a problem um you know right now they split off half of them stay to fight with uh the man and the one or the giant or the woman and the giant and then they're all gonna go rush to city hall so it's just gonna be like a fucking multiple different fight scenes split up across Pristella. This is already a shonen. We already have a, a pseudo Orochimaru already healing attacks. And, oh, oh my god! <laughs> this is, this is <laughs> yeah, this is basically it right now. Okay. Um, of that, is all the best warriors are like kind of in one area, as far as we're aware, other than Reinhardt. Like we have some other. What else do we have outside of the six we have uh, going with us to the capital? Uh, the group that originally set out, who was with them? Yeah, I'm saying, do we have anybody else to go to any other towers, or is it just um we can think of? I, I don't know if like... Anna really holds like any <laughs> fighting capability if she goes out with people, but Anastasia stayed back. Um, fuck, the Tonchin Khan think... stayed back too, right? They're not. Yes, well, we they, have, they don't like, hold any real. Like... from Priscilla's camp. We don't know where we Priscilla or Liliana or... is. We don't know where. We don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Um, we have the two thugs. I think still. Um. It's not. It's not looking very hopeful for other places. It's really don't not. Take care of this. Just, yeah. My main thing that I want to know is like, where where the fuck is Reinhardt? Dude, he, he's eating some sausages. His plan I mean, needed him. It's been, it's been implied previously that he's he's um like didn't no, they? No, I know hear, he's occupied, like, but 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 like clearly it's it's got to be like a problematic situation if he's not here killing all the archbishops already <laughs> no 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 they open one of the gates and reinhardt's just standing with his like divine protection of holding back water he's like hey guys uh well, what i miss i'm just holding all this water back <laughs> like the entire lake's trying to flood the city and he's just standing there with his arms across something like that it's gonna be something <laughs> crazy personally i, I also believe. i also feel like it's way too early for them to like defeat all these archbishops because we we're not even halfway through arc five and they're just no. encountering them now. So I'm really curious to see what happens from here on out. But I was I... hoping it was going to be our original uh, gluttony so that way we can see <laughs> if Krush got her memory back right now. But no. We don't really know how that good. works if yeah. um, gluttony's defeated. Shared like, or not. Yeah. That and I need my boy Julius to stop screaming. Please. But no, no it's your favorite is your favorite lines. <laughs> I was surprised you read that the first time because I was over here reading uh, Wilhelm's lines. I was like, freak, I'm tripping on these things. And then I got you here go, L I can't I don't even remember the word. El Prelium. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you just said it. El Prelium. Like, yeah. El Prelium. Gosh. Magical girl yeah. Julius. Since this is more action heavy, <laughs> it's a little less speculation at the moment versus Are you... abilities. Okay, so who's narrating next chapter? It would be me. Pog. Is everybody I will be ready? Back in a second. Okay, yeah, we're not to... ready to go. All right. I just need to restock some water and go to toilet. All right, more <laughs> pog. Uh, who do you think is going to get the finishing blow? Will it be Cruz? on who? On who? On who? Uh, do you? Who do you think is going to get the uh, crushing blow? On, <laughs> crushing uh, blow. <laughs> crushing <laughs> blow. <laughs> crushing <laughs> blow. Long. You <laughs> suck. <laughs> Please I'll give it to Subaru. Out. Ever. We got jokes. <laughs> Oh, Maybe Bliss with the one dollar donation. Accident. Reinhardt's taking a dump. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's actually like something serious that could happen. You could just be like, "Oh man, I had terrible food yesterday. I'm stuck." And he's like, "I had too many outside? sausage rolls, Subaru. I'm sorry." I have <laughs> there is a comment in the chat. For that. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's like, uh, "Reinhardt broke into the Priscilla sausage storage." And that's why I said. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a significant portion of the chat is going to be very confused by all the sauce. Oh, they should have came to the five-hour marathon. Then it's not our fault. Oops. Yeah. Somebody timestamped Andre. You're here. You mad lad. You timestamped everything. There's like fifty timestamps from that video. Andre, look, you Priscilla simp. You're finally getting your attention. I'm proud oh my of you. god. When I looked at it, it was like the Chronicles. It was like fucking... he's really good at that. Like, he, did you see what he did for the when we had that original lust diff? Yes. Yeah, he did like Napa and Vegeta's freaking talk about <laughs> Yeah, he really went all out. Vegeta! <laughs> what is it, Napa? This is the wrong reading. 
Stay uh, out apologies of this. to the wait, everyone. I'm this back now. Lost F. I'm gonna go oh, now. Oh, the is back. I oh. have to go. We My to planet leave. needs me. Let's go on our spaceship, Vegeta. <laughs> Let's go fast. <laughs> oh, no, stay away from me. <laughs> no, but yeah, Andre's like an MVP when it comes. Like he comes up with the most creative titles for every section. Like he said that being a sarcastic in character. the five hour stream, it was like hollow here's drilling foreshadowing. And it's like a little arc <laughs> for the fire drill. Oh my gosh. Andre, there you All go. Right. Your moment. Um, moment. I think the humble Wulu is the next narrator. The humble, yes, more like the amazing God King Wulu. All right. Don't infringe on his rights, ma'am. <laughs> all right quick gaslighting my boy <laughs> if we're all ready is there anything else you want to bring up from this chapter uh hunter how do you feel being a part of the crew finally making your debut hey it feels good man it's a very you know active community i just gotta find my place <laughs> hey we're all you know what's funny um yeah what's oh, up sorry, you, go, I... you go no 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 you go i insist I was making lunch during that you know i'm feeling quite gluttonous you know oh my god <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> Can we kick this guy out of our project? That was a horrible joke. That was well, no, pretty no. unfunny. I'm gonna be you know frank. What? You say worst jokes. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Number Start one, it off. victory yeah. royale. Okay, let's get into it. Yeah, Fortnite, we got to get there. Um, it's fine. We are can we all set it. to go? No. Yes. I'm good. I'm ready. All right, go ahead, Wulu. Read us the Arc 5 chapter, and let's get right into this. Was first merciful. Okay. <laughs> Subaru's first merciless strike had been blocked by teeth. At the front end of the whip, dancing is deliberately intending to infuriate was Roy Alfred of Gluttony. Alfred, too, was a sound Subaru was familiar with. This bastard also shames the name of Star! Ah! Subaru-sama, that topic is over! Allow me to engage him! Subaru raised his arm for another brutal blow of his whip. Alfred drew his own weapon. At the same time, Cruchet unleashed her hundred-man strike. A frenzy blade of wind instantly swept through the lobby of the city hall, bisecting chairs and the reception desk. Of course, the cut should have also ruthlessly sliced up Alfred, but... Wow! Awesome! But although this one looks tough... Uh -huh. Boy, as if seeing the invisible blade of wind, bent over backwards to avoid it. Bridge, his head rested on the floor briefly before he flipped backwards. That action, he assumed the battle already posed, crouching with his face raised. It's an attack, since allies would be caught up for it. That was a rather third rate tactic. It doesn't seem all that delicious. Finished. Alfred kicked the ground, his body flying forward like a bullet. Open to expose rows of sharp teeth resembling a hound, coupled with his appearance. People would mistakenly think he was a straggly wild dog. Only, a wild dog's danger level could never compare. It brought her sword up to meet him, attempting to behead him with a downward flash. <laughs> Muscles, but not powerful enough! To us, you're not even a beginner! Uh As he waved his right hand, Crochet's sword bounced away with a sharp sound. A closer look, there was a cloth wrapped around Alfred's wrist, and tangled up with those were twin daggers, one in each hand, weapons that took advantage of the speed and flexibility of his thin, small body to fight. One dagger that had parried away her sword, the left one, swept towards Crusade's throat. Though she immediately twisted her body to avoid it, Alfred slipped through the air her shoulder and kicked her in midway to blow her away. for you to be looking over your shoulder. <laughs> In fact, you're the easiest target! Alfred stopped on the ground, flying at Subaru, who was still distracted by the sight of Crusade sliding on the floor. The dim lighting, the thin figure of gluttony, wrapped in rags, disappeared in darkness. Subaru lost sight of his figure. Not good. The perfect decoy, as evidenced by his track record with Sloth. <laughs> Aiming at Subaru, who was full of openings, 
Alfred had revealed an opening of his own. Maru, keenly aware of his own powerlessness, had sworn to himself that no matter the situation, he would not act impulsively and hastily and imitate the boy. Biting his lip, he grounded himself with the pain, allowing the most powerful party member an opportunity to strike. Julius's piercing strike silently approached that small body. Alfred immediately managed to twist the midair to evade, but his body was still cut down by the finest of knives. And blood sprang out, and Gluttony's body rolled onto the floor. Wow! Surprising! Then how about another surprise? Blew my buds! As Julius spoke, his quasi-spirits began another barrage of attacks as Alfred bounced back to his feet, then darting away. At that moment, Rainbow tried to distance filled the dim hall, an aurora blossoming forth from Julius' attack. Back, aiming at gluttony. Just... I hope one such as you, who appreciates gourmet, will enjoy. No matter which bud, I am proud to enjoy the bloom of these child's flowers. <laughs> oh, they're pretentious! We don't like them! The world burning in the aurora. Alfred spoke as he escaped high. Julius' thin sword followed his back, hunting down Alfred with a flurry of sword strikes from all directions, attempted to escape with a sideways jump. Lolly man, sir! Don't call me by that name, Julie! Take Valkyrie with you to the top floor. Stop the broadcast! Adding away each other's names, Julius declared that he would hold off Alfred. Supporting a wheezing crochet, Subaru judged this as the most reasonable course of action. He could not quite agree with it. That boy, mocking them as he darted around, was, after all, gluttony. An enemy who Subaru had pursued for over a year. Seeing that defeating him was one of Subaru's top priorities would be no exaggeration. Even though he was right there. I... I understand. Julie-sama, I will pray for your blade to be swift and true. However... Before Subaru could protest, Krishna climbed to her feet and gave a response to Julius. Subaru suddenly raised his face, seeing her own full of resolve. Krishna was another victim of gluttony, having been robbed of her memories. Of course, she had also wanted to seize this chance for her to retrieve her memories. And so, she assumed her own responsibility and entrusted the fight against gluttony to others. Beside those feelings, she was also well aware of her own lack of strength. Ironically enough, both Subaru and Crochet were being risked for a choice at the same time, as they stood up. <laughs> so it's going to happen! How are we doing it? Are we all going together? Even the disappointing woman and scummy man can be served as appetizer! <laughs> then, Julie-sama? We'll eat him! Swallow him! Nibble him! Lick him! Taste him! Swallowed him! Bite him! Bite him into pieces! Into pieces and devour! Gonna <sighs> <Glutton> me! <laughs> Don't say anything unnecessary. I didn't become Julie in vain. Bert still wore a smile and a relaxed attitude, and an aerospace limited by that aurora. This pursued victory, the dancing strikes of their swords producing steel sounds. Before all of that, Julius and Subaru's eyes caught for a moment. The case did not convey anything to Super by itself. <sighs> Fuck it! Listen! Bastard! You absolutely can't lose! Hmm. And that is what I should say. Losing is not acceptable, and neither is dying. No. You absolutely cannot die here. Let's go! Lolly Man Susama! Scratching his head for the time being, Subaru set aside his feelings and started running. Oh, he should at least sprint in front of Crochet. In truth, and much to his own shame, he could react to any surprise attack much faster than he could. Rue chased behind the still wounded Crochet, and they both sprinted up to the next flight of stairs. Before leaving, he took one last look at Julius and Alfred's fight in the lobby. Julius seemed to have the advantage. He could not let his guard down. Go! Crap! Where is Subaru's gaze? Julius did not permit him to worry about his own status. Though he was incredibly annoying, the idea of something happening to him was troublesome. Brute turned to follow Crochet, bounding up the stairs in one breath. 
hoped that something might be lying in the ambush, they immediately took another flight of stairs, heading toward the topmost room. The way there. Subaru-sama, I must apologize. If I am not mistaken, your priority should be gluttony. Stop it, Kusan. Nobody thinks it's your fault. Keeping watching the situation upstairs, Crochet softly let out an apology. However, Crochet should also be frustrated. He apologized to would not heal the wounds that either of them had. He did not want to blame himself. He wanted to apologize too. I'm sorry, Ren. Please, wait a little longer. Missing the name of the girl who was still sleeping in the mansion, Subaru let out a heartfelt expression of regret. In fact, I'd like to run back right now and tear that sneering malicious sin archbishop limb from limb. If that brought her back, what would be wrong with it? The turmoil that would ensue would shake up the lives and deaths of many people. Consequences would be much easier to take in as if it were a simple-minded person, unable to think ahead of these issues. Though he knew that if he had did that, Rem would probably be angry with him upon waking up. <sighs> Jay said nothing to Subaru, who held his breath and repressed the emotions building up inside him. He just closed his eyes, expressing regret for his own apology. They resumed their match, their march, with her at the forefront. The hall was a five-story building, and Subaru and Cruchet were already on the fourth floor. There are conference rooms and archive rooms for paperwork on the middle floors. From a quick check on the information displayed on each landing, it's safe to assume that the broadcasting room is located on the top floor. In other words, Lost is also going to be there. Yes, that is true. But considering the size of this corridor, would she really... Peeking into the corridor on the fourth floor, Couchet raised her eyebrows in suspicion. The question was natural, and Subaru held the same question. The corridor of the fourth floor was only wide enough for four people to walk side by side. Most, albeit a guest taken at a distance, the black dragon looking down at the square seemed to be as large as an elephant. It's very hard to imagine that it would be able to fit into the corridor from the building. Of course, there was the possibility that... Instead of ascending through the corridors, it had just destroyed the wall and forced its body into the room. What do you think? At least, I don't think there's going to be an ambush in the corridors. Kusan, do you agree with this? I think the real problem is an ambush at the broadcasting room. But, it's been so long since they went inside. I'm sure that they're setting up something. Yes, I agree with you. I am certain that they are preparing an ambush in the broadcasting room. There's no doubt that that's where they'll be. However, the people who are supposed to be in the city hall have not been found so far. If we're not careful, then this hostage situation will... Mori thought about it. The number of bad situations coming to his mind increased. It was not the kind of problem that would be solved with just martial prowess. Cruchet's fighting ability was, as stated by herself, average, and she could not be relied upon to use magic. Subaru's ability also decreased because of Beatrice's departure from the front lines. The boot, upon close inspection, it was clear that a lot of blood was pouring from his right leg. <sighs> you can't call yourself brave until you plunge into the tiger's den! Once the battle starts taking place, and we finish the outside one. We should be able to join them down there, and the situation will quickly change. In that case, there is no reason for Lust to postpone the broadcast any further. In the end, Subaru-sama and I have no option other than acting to prevent it. The best way to deal with an ambush. Shea asserted and stared at Subaru. Feeling himself overpowered by that passionate gaze, Subaru gulped. Uh, Kushan? I have heard from Wilhelm that Subaru-sama is the one able to come up with the optimal solution to these situations. And so, I believe it as well. That's some heavy trust! Tom's overestimation of Subaru's performance was compounded even further by Cruchet's own expectations. I'd have forgotten the times when Subaru had been underrated by everyone. Feeling as if he were about to be crushed by the weight of his own expectations being placed upon him, 
Subaru mused about it as much as he could in the short time he had left. And, and although he was not completely sure of it, came to a decision. What can we do to deal with an ambush? Yes? If someone's going to wait for us as a matter of course, let's break that course. There are several important factors in an ambush. First of all, the location. Ambushes were a tactic that consisted in a person waiting for the opportunity to attack their enemies from a dominant location. That was the most essential element. Secondly, it was necessary to be certain that the enemy would indeed appear at the set location. If the key opponent were missing, it would render the ambush completely pointless. Over. It was also necessary to correctly estimate the time of arrival of the enemy at the location of the ambush. Spending too much time lying in wait would make the ones setting the ambush lose their focus, and the ambush would not have maximum effect. So, assuming that Lust was setting an ambush, all three of these conditions have been fulfilled. No matter what, they needed to break into the broadcast room with a, a set amount of time, their enemy's perspective, there was no easier situation to hunt their prey than this. Therefore, we must destroy this situation. Got it. No, I am of nobility. I have once decided to believe in Subaru-sama, so I will never change that. I will leave it to you. Broadcasting room located on the top floor. No floor above that. Earlier, Capella had appeared on the rooftop through the top floor. That was exactly where Subaru and Cruchet were preparing to execute their plan to defeat their opponent's strategy. Cruchet, who had been initially puzzled by Subaru's proposal, seemed determined. This way of doing things was her invariable merit, both before and after losing her memory. Honestly, I wish to see how the battle in this square is faring. But, if we go check on them, then our actions will be meaningless. Even at this height, they could hear swords clashing, as well as Garfield's cursing, still ongoing, so no aid from that front could be expected. Anyway... Looking around, Subaru examined the roof. All marks had been left there and there on the ground. Probably traces of the Black Dragon walking around. Railings and fences that looked over the square had disappeared due to the, due to the magic damage caused by Julius. Subaru thought that the tremendous power... As he went around the rooftop, heading to the side opposite to the square. Assuming that the floor layout was correct, we were indeed just above the broadcasting room. Naturally, Capella would be lying in ambush there, waiting for Subaru and Cruchet. Subaru, Sama. What happened? Please take a moment if you're unprepared. I'm sorry, but just now, I noticed something. Hmm? Jay spoke rather weakly as Subaru bruised himself with an iron fence. Subaru looked at her with surprise, and she looked back at him with a stiff expression. I seem to have a certain fear of heights, so let us hurry. Huh. Huh. An unexpected weakness? Weakness? Got it. Ready? Confirming that the fence was firmly fixed, Subaru nodded to Cruchet. She returned a stiff nod to, of her own, and stepped meekly into Subaru's chest with arms outstretched. Please do not let go. Uh, Krishan, there are many men who misunderstand, so it's better if you don't say those kinds of words often. Uh-huh. Subaru turned his head towards Krishay. A wry smile plastered all over his face. Krishay nestled in his arms, clinging to him swung loose from the iron fence with great force. Naturally, their bodies were drawn towards downwards by gravity, heading straight towards the ground, the wall of the building at their side. And as they fell, they reached the lowest point the whip wrapped around Subaru's waist would allow them to. Bring <laughs> the weight of two people at the same time, Subaru's shoulders were in enough pain that it seemed his arms were about to come off. Twisting sideways, the two swung in an upward arc, reaching the outer wall of the city hall. Seeing the window of the broadcast room approaching, Subaru stretched out his feet and shattered it. <gasps> what? 
Shards of glass fell onto the floor. Subaru and Crochet rolled into the broadcast room. For a moment, Crochet seemed like she had released a small cry, but Subaru pretended not to hear it as if he released her from her, his arms. Both climbed to their feet, immediately looked around, and found that they're inside the room. <coughs> Staring blankly at the two who had just jumped in, with eyes wide open, was a black dragon sitting in a stiff posture. The massive body they had seen from the roof had been stuffed into that room. The black dragon had folded its wings and twisted its neck, apparently facing the door that led to the corridor. Assumably, it had originally intended to turn Super and Crochet to ash the moment they tried to enter. That idea had been seen through. Obstructed by that huge body, it was in a room that confined her movement greatly. Though the black dragon attempted to counter both of them, trying to spread its wings. Crusan, Right! Pleased of her fear of heights, Crusade nodded a response before shooting a slash. A blade of wind sliced into the black dragon, damaging a wing. Rushing towards it, she slashed one of its front legs with a direct blow. Lust screamed loudly as dark blood began to spray. Ah! Watch out! Get down! Whoa! <sighs> Pella writhed in pain as she flapped her wings and swung her neck widely, destroying the room. Though the room was rather larger than usual, its durability was not enough to withstand the rampage of an elephant-sized creature. In order to escape from destruction, Subaru turned to run. At that moment, he noticed something. As a black dragon, a girl trembled in desperation, bound in chains. Subaru met eyes with that fearful girl, realizing Lust had adopted a very effective hostage strategy. Should be the initial ambush fail. It was filled with rage. Focusing, Subaru's body instinctively chose to move forward rather than escape. Then she could dodge the tail that tipped over his head. He slid towards the little girl that was lying down next to the feet of the black dragon. Picking up that shuddering petite body, he flicked his whip fiercely at the back of the black dragon's head. Did not seem to inflict too much damage, but it allowed a Subaru to express his rage. Crochet's strikes were not so powerless. Wait! Wait! You've got the wrong- <laughs> Nothing was asked to you! This is retribution for the chaos and turmoil you have wrought upon the city! Crochet's blade did not forgive the Black Dragon, who had its head in rather human-like manner. Almost disappointing fragility, the teleport no defense to that steel blade. Crochet cut the remaining wing, her slender legs kicking the dragon's screaming body. The different it was from Subaru's leg strength, as that huge body was shaken violently by that kick's power. The fella stumbled backwards in the opposite direction of the window Subaru had broken. Most of the black dragon's wings had yet to begin to regenerate, though she had called her body immortal. This was the rate of regeneration, and it could not be called a threat. It is over! Wait! Allowing it to finish, Crusade ran as she let loose several successful strikes on the Black Dragon's body, head, and wings. A huge body slammed the wall, crashing through the window frame and falling outside. The dragon, having been thrown off from the building and begun to descend, immediately spread its wings. Not. One of the wings had been torn away at the wing from the other side had been torn, now resembling a hook. The dragon was unable to support flight. The dragon, without a chance to regenerate, had no time to say anything. Simply falling to the ground. A few seconds later, the noise of lust hitting the ground arrived. It was the sound of meat slamming against a wall, a wet towel being dropped on the floor. I shall go and confirm the situation. Subaru-sama, can you take care of this child? Uh, right. I got it. Boucher walked up to the window form from the, which the dragon had fallen. Ever vigilant with a heartfelt trust in her, Subaru gently released the girl who had been caught up in the current turmoil. She was still in a state of fear. Confusion in her quivering gaze as she looked at Subaru was inevitable. It was all natural that anyone experiencing that glare by, at a, by a dragon would be scared beyond their wits. It's okay. That bad ran over there, just now. Though, not that easily. 
Where's everyone else? Uh, uh. Although it's hard to believe, we're on your side. We're here to save you. We need to do some things before the bad guy comes back. Can you help me? Bent his knees, keeping their lines at sight level, and spoke with a gentle tone. It was the unconscious behavior he would use whenever speaking with someone younger, due to his fondness for children. She seemed to calm down slightly, taking deep breaths as if stealing herself before reply. <sighs> There's a room over there! Everyone's in there! Are they trapped there? That room. The girl pointed to a room at the back of the broadcasting room. Rather, this room was not the broadcasting room. Although it was a large division, there was no broadcast equipment at all. Even if the radio were a meteor, Subaru could not find anything resembling one such thing in the room. Perhaps it was some kind of preparation room, so that meant the room that the girl was indicating was most likely the real broadcasting room. As he turned his gaze over, Subaru hesitated. He wanted to inquire about the life or death of the people inside. However, asking the girl such a thing was far too cruel and inconsiderate. Subaru patted the shaking girl's head, slowly making his way towards the room. Uh. Heart beating hard and fast, Subaru sweat break on his neck. Suddenly, his throat felt parched and dry as well. Not even his voluntary cars won't jump made him so nervous. This was a sense of nasty premonition, a terror which preoccupied his mind. Subaru-sama? Everything's fine. I'm gonna check it right away. What happened to Lust? Everything is fine here as well. I do not know why she's staying put, though. Jay replied while still being wary of Lust under her gaze. Upon hearing that answer, Subaru took a deep breath and headed for the room, reaching out to brush the doorknob. The broadcasting room, there was a possibility that there were other witch cults, cultists hiding, that in mind, entering the door to inspect what laid inside was not the better option for Subaru. For some reason, the kind of worry seemed superficial. In fact, the idea was right. Because, in reality, no cultists occupied that room. Occupying it was... Speechless gazeness gazes. They looked at Subaru with amazement. No. Maybe he just wanted to assume they were looking. Subaru had no way of understanding how they observed the world, and he did not particularly want to understand. He simply felt dismay. His voice would not work. This is what it meant to be truly speechless. Thoughts froze. They thought of nothing, however, or something he finally did understand. The nature of that irritating sound accompanied the jarring voice in the background he had heard in the shelter. What is this? Response to Subaru, that sound spoke. The sound was one which welcomed Subaru. A fearsome sound, a defiant sound, a joyful sound, a meaningless sound. The sound of numerous wings beating echoed throughout the broadcast room. The darkened room, countless blinking red compound eyes moved as if staring at Subaru. There were many, many flies crammed into one room. And all the flies were the same size as people. This one, that one too, all of them. Ah! Huh? Amidst the black haze of his consciousness, Subaru registered a sudden pained cry. Up into a sudden response, Subaru slammed the doors to that room. Closing all with it the sound of a hundred beating wings. And looking back, he found... You want me to cover?
Jace? the heel of the girl who issued that sharp, righteous laughter was Cruche in agony. There was no doubt that the familiar poisonous laughter. It's me, Capella Chan! <laughs> Capella winked and stuck out her tongue. Cruche vomited a large amount of blood, whites of her eyes barely showing. That wraps up Arc 5, Chapter 35. Pog, light novel image unlocked. Beep beep. God. That was good. Jeez. That was real good, guys. That was good. Uh, that was, uh... Uh... So are you there? Where are you? We're fine. All right, episode discussion. On a different note, um, did they say flies the size of people? That's supposed to be taken literally. It's horrific. Yeah, it was. It's absolutely terrifying. That's absolutely disgusting. I don't know. When I read um, that, I, I thought of people with like big fly heads. I for a second there, I was like, okay, there's like a lot of corpses in here, and there's just a lot of flies. Cause we heard the insects up last time. But no, yeah, just full on actual disgust. Yeah. Also, this image. There was. Um, have a bit of her with the uh, like the, the the wings and kind of like are those bulbs off the side of her hips? People are gonna uh, go insane for that image. You know? Hey, Jace. Uh, I don't know what happened. It just my mic just stopped working. Can we just get you to say that line for just? Guess hearing you say that line. You fucking simp. Yeah, please. Uh, which one? <laughs> no, the the ending. Just the oh. ending. That's all you'll ever be is just the ending. No, oh, but there are like two ending lines. You want the yeah, very last one? Yeah, the last, the last two. Might as well, since I know okay. you said it and we didn't. <laughs> None of us heard. Uh. <laughs> stupid, stupid, you dregs. The meat in your head simply isn't enough. You actually tried to match me in a battle of wits. Who put sugar in your brain and made it into soup? <laughs> nice. So nice. Me, Capella Chan! <laughs> okay, I feel Jesus like this, Christ. This cast Damn. is just basically like, find who you really are in your evil villain voice. Everyone's going to have an evil villain and it's going to be their best voice acting. I'm telling you right now. I just want to make sure happen. that your Jace, mic is good. how the fuck do you do that? See, I'm so dizzy. Um, in You're pain. <laughs> Get ready for chapter 36. Shreddy your vocal cords. Ripping oh out vocal cords. Um, funny Bumping. thing, Krush did get to cut up a dragon. He did get to do that. Uh, didn't work for long. But... Uh... Was that? Oh, I, 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 this has been uh, this has been bogging my head for a while actually. So, I finished watching the anime, of course. Every time I've heard uh, Cruchet's name, they pronounce it Cruchet. I just wanted to know, is that a mispronunciation of the English dub's part? or is It's it a mispronunciation. It is a mispronunciation, yeah. yeah. I was... also, it's Cruch. Okay. I I've been saying it wrong. Patrache. This whole time, it's fine, it's fine. Patrache. <laughs> Patrache. <laughs> we should do a live stream where we all try to voice each other's characters and fail miserably. Jesus. That sounds like gold. Oh wait, is that Pat? He said, I yeah. will be a, yeah, What's up, Pat? I still can do it. Where the fuck were you? The sausage man himself. Hey, hey, Pat. Sausage I need Pat? to ask you something. Did you find Lagunica or not Lagunica? Prestella's like storage of sausage rolls, and that's why you're not helping with anything. Uh, I'm on holiday. Yeah, we can kind of use your help, buddy. Need... He's on holiday. This planet needs him. He's on holiday at the <laughs> storage oh, this facility. This day off. <laughs> I came here with, you know, felt summer to have a nice relaxing trip, and then this broke and I was like, nah, this is holiday time. This, I'm on holidays. This, this isn't for me. He's doing some father son bonding time. Father uh, bonding yeah. Time. Suck, son. Thanks, dad. Uh, thanks, dad. I love you. I never knew uh, my father. 
Uh, well, uh, thank God you didn't have a feral like mine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, son. Oh, shit. I didn't mean it, Daddy. I didn't mean it, Daddy. I'm sorry. Don't hit me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I will only get you emotionally. It is Jesus impossible Christ. to do it physically, literally. <laughs> <laughs> For years, he's been trying to hit Reinhardt. He just hasn't been able to. <laughs> he just throws like the closest thing near next to him. Imagine when, uh, getting ratioed by Reinhardt Priscilla. Dodges it. I hate the fact I can't hit you after the first strike. I'm sorry, Father. I didn't mean to dodge. Let me win at least I'll, once. I'll try to get hit this time. Oh fuck. Okay, but Go this ahead, yeah, this try. chapter, this chapter. Hello, greetings. Um, we got more uh, Krush characterization with her being scared of heights. I just thought it was funny. It was so horrible. Yeah, we got like a moment of her cutting down the dragon, which was great. I was hoping I was like, you guys better give her like one cool moment. Very nice. I, I like. Oh my god. I like. I like how Subaru like is just so amazed by how badass he uh, she she is. He's like, uh, right, yeah, I'll do what you told me to. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is also yeah, a Capella character memory, reveal, she's... character design reveal. Yes. So yes. Um, do you have do you have much to say about it, Hollow? Specifically, you. Um, get off Krush. That's all I'm gonna say. Good. I get off. Yeah, get off Krush. No, I don't like oh, it. Krush is dabber. I'm good. She's crazy. She's absolutely all insane. Right. Get your filthy feet off Krush, Sama. Oh, filthy. <laughs> 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 I mean, you're the comparison. You're supposed to be on my side. I was on Twitter last night. I was extremely sleep deprived, and I saw lightning posts. Might as well change your whole Twitter account to Capella. And I was like, oh, not a bad idea. So I swapped yeah, my entire you tagged, time. You, you like pinged me at like 2 3 in the morning, and that was the first thing I woke up to. Pog. Yeah, Jace told me about it when I got in here, and I was like, no, there's no way. And I have It's literally called it Capella Shine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep. it's never changed. Just like the stupid Remographics thing. Tomorrow is going to be Teresia that. Sama. Then it's going to go back to you Anastasia. Know, you know, I already, told, I already said you you talked about her so little that there's not even any point. What's you, there to talk about? Develop. Listen, no, talk about this That's chapter lightning. Point. You're you're here as my debt slave to talk about chapters. Go for it. Talk about and this no, chapter. No, uh, no, no, no. I'm getting my plug. Hey guys, I'm the Lightning Eagle. Follow me on YouTube. Okay, anyway. <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> So, Subaru <laughs> and um, Julius being like, we've had their development as a friendship like already grow, but they've, these last couple of chapters, they haven't even really even been insulting each other. It's been I very nice it. to see him so concerned about Julius that he just turns around and is still staring. I got to call him Lolly Mancer. Freak home. Hurry up. When I, when I, 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 I got to call him Lolly Mancer. Julius' part as well. Dude, when I read that, I just started laughing because like he's I, not trying to make fun of him. It's like a no, he's he's, I tried not title. to laugh. Like I was practicing my line. I was like, lol. And I just stopped and started laughing. And I was like, fuck. I can't laugh. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> after that line, you just you just hear Julius whisper, get ratioed, idiot. Lolly Mancer. Get ratioed, idiot. No! Get ratioed, idiot. <laughs> Shut the fuck yes, up. Yes, what the toddler said. Line. One detail of the fight for outside when they're like, we're worried about the fight outside. I just want to imagine Garfield just screaming swears. <laughs> <laughs> all you hear is like little quack. But we have all this music, right? Like everything's dramatic for us, but like in a real fight, there's no music. He's just swearing <laughs> and there's, there's just clacking of metal while they run with the sound of the wind. It's literally and it's just. Like, you think he's all right? Ah! Oh no! I should have sworn in the background. Uh. <laughs> oh, you're good, you're good. Dude, are we just like your voice promoting, even like peak? We're promoting all of the people just swearing. Like Petra swears now. Subaru has a potty mouth. Like, oh my gosh, that's my favorite. Ah! That's my favorite. swear. What like... the? Bro, someone's gotta get some soap. Get some soap. That's my favorite thing about swearing. web novel Subaru. He swears all the time, and I fucking love it. Does he really like that often? Like a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's in art yeah. form, he yeah. swears yeah. way more in the web novel. Well, he does have reasons to swear, like, the poor mm -hmm. fella is going through really serious psychological, Reinhard, you know, he's getting torture. ratioed. Ah, don't be mean, man. Man, you know, take it easy. Reinhard, you don't get an opinion, you're not here. I can't <laughs> believe one of Subaru's deaths was him getting ratioed on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Worst one of all, man. As your grandfather, I am quite disappointed in you, young man. I am quite disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, funny. not you, grandson. Uh, Super, you've done amazing. Reinhardt, I'm specifically disappointed in you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> didn't get, you didn't get Will Hominy sauce to go. It's okay, Reinhardt. It's okay. Son, oh come God. here. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, what? 
Like okay. Love and affection. You know what I want to clarify from this chapter. So Capella just basically pulled a fat bamboozle on them. Yeah. Guys. And you want to I mean, it, it, it shows us that she's not. Um, she's not afraid to resort to dirty tactics. <laughs> I honestly, she she could have just taken them on like normally. She's just doing it to be a dick. Yeah, that's. Very yeah, sadistic. True. Yeah. Hello, all you meat creatures. I mean, we are technically meat He's creatures. Really like, like, um, it's just like with all these witch board on, members, you're just so on. insane. Jace, are, is your mic good for next chapter? Okay, okay. Dragon. Dragon Sama. Kobayashi san, Dragon Maid. Hello? Oh, oh, I was on mute. I was so worried <laughs> that my mic. Jace, can you stop queuing oh, stuff? No. You're messing it up. Well, okay, fine. Shut up. Go away, wow. Sylvan. Wow. That's rude to Sylvan. Sorry, so Sylvan's gonna be uh That's a sound music for chapter thirty-six. Oh, hey! So... You can't steal my title. <laughs> Since I only have about like thirty-five minutes, if I have to switch out, I will guys I will let you guys know in chat. I'll, oh, I'll make it quite it. clear. Well, yeah, in like thirty five ish minutes I have to go to work. So well, I'm just this you know. chapter I don't even think has you in it, so yeah, yeah, you're not it's, needed anymore. It's but... mainly a dialogue chapter, you so we'll know why. Idiot. I'm, I'm technically in it, but I'm doing vomiting blood in the background. <laughs> 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 Every now and then. Oh, I you just, better show I just them. imagine, like, it switches to Crucial Perspective. She's having, like, a really nice dream. <laughs> She's like, I won. <laughs> I slayed the dragon. <laughs> they will I'm call the me Crucial the Dragon Slayer. I am the Cruce best the dragon king. crusher. They start playing the fairy tale music. No, <laughs> leave. Get the hell out of here. Uh, generic shonen shit you've ever seen. This chapter is gonna probably be very heavy on lore. I'm guessing based on who's appearing in this, or it's gonna be <laughs> just simping, and I'm gonna cry. It's one of the two. Or to pay is gonna give us loads of messages that we don't know the answers to. I'm gonna. I us have nine one one on speed dial. <laughs> so this is um 15 pages i think is this chapter there's also character design at the very end do we want to show that at the very end of this reading there's the the character design for cappy i'm assuming that's garrick and then the two little shits that garrick has his kids uh hey oh fred ain't that bad <laughs> i probably want to see it He's no, a good are, we, boy. are we gonna show it at the end of this re or end of this chapter? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. No, no, Fred. Who, I love Fred. Who is Narita Kun? It is I, uh, Narita. It is Kyle's the kid narrator. Tyrant, uh, Amelia. It's Kiel's McGill's. Okay. Kyle of the McGill's variety. I just oh, spilled wow. coffee. Wow. I spilled Kyle's coffee all over my keyboard. Clan. What? So, it's uh, good. Uh, I'm finished cleaning that up. It's currently on the ground, soaking up, so, uh... Today has been a very interesting day. You have an external keyboard, or are you... Did you just spill it oh, on your Mac? So, uh, no, it's not on my Mac. It's on, uh, my dude's computer, because my Mac <gasps> is broken. <gasps> so, oh, no. I, uh, Not your dudes! <laughs> you know what you guys should do? Donate to the Mommy Capella Meat Slab Fund. Uh, freaking gosh, that's what it's called now. Why the I fuck did you have to name like it that? <laughs> I hate you, Hollow. Again, you know, the, the sooner we on meet the goal, dial. the sooner we meet the goal, the sooner I can change it back to Hoshin Company. Please, Sleeping bag. So Sleeping bag, help me. <laughs> Please, oh god, if he keeps saying meat creatures, I'm gonna lose it. Hello, all you meat creatures. Oh my gosh, I'm so disappointed. Before uh, we start the next chapter, I just want to I say thank you guys so much history. for uh, letting me be a part of this and all that. I do have to go. Oh, no uh, worries, man. Thanks for stopping by. No worries. You did an amazing job. job today, man. It was great. Yeah, good job. job. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, everybody, for... for professional. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for coming and watching. Uh, this is a lot of fun. This is awesome. I can't wait till my next uh, my next part. Next thank debut. you guys so much. Next debut. <laughs> Hell yeah. Later, Thanks guys. Thanks for stopping by. Have a good one. You're fantastic. Later. His voice terrifies me. <laughs> what is he supposed to do? It was like the he extra stuff him. he added the on little, to it The too, little, the <laughs> before he starts yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, freak, dude. This guy's going in, for real. He's he was made. in PC <laughs> with me, Soul, and Gold yesterday, and he's like, I'm not sure if it's good enough. And then he rips that out, and we're like, you're fine. <laughs> you're good. Dude, why, why do you want me to share the why? Why am I going to share this on oh, my stream? No one's ever going to see this. Why Why would you not? Otherwise, I'm just going to share it on my stream multiple times. Wow, that's so fine. 
problem. We Wait, have Arden with the $1. Reinhardt, sorry for the delay. I was at Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> he was getting the sausage breakfast sandwich. Oh, no. shut up. <laughs> oh, <hold on. laughs> oh, you should just save it. Yeah, man, you should just show it to them. Just go ahead. No, I'll, I'll show it after the reading's over. Is everybody prepared for next chapter? <laughs> And by yeah, everyone, I, just, I mean, I I mean buddy. Capella and Subaru. Yeah. I yes, sorry. All right. All right, EMT. Whenever you're oh, ready. No. Are you are you done cleaning up uh, the, yeah. the cough spill? Okay. Okay. It's just going to drip onto the floor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hoping we don't have to buy two keyboards today. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Whenever you are ready, let's get right into it. <laughs> <clears throat> Arc 5, Chapter 36 The Beginning and Conclusion of Love Behind him was a room full of gigantic flies. Subaru and Krush had defeated the Black Dragon, and it now lay motionless on the ground outside. And yet, in front of Subaru was a girl, laughing as she repeatedly dug her foot into Krush. Sinister laughter, a sardonic tone, the person in front of him was undoubtedly Capella Emerata Lagunica the witch's cult Sin Archbishop of Lust. His entire body started going haywire. What? What is this? Do you actually have to take the time to think about it? You scum shouldn't worry about such things. The best choice is for you to recognize the reality before you. You saw a beautiful maiden shaking with fear. But in reality, it was a Sin Archbishop of the witch cult. Ta-da! As Subaru's mind raced, Capella danced around sticking her mocking tongue out at Subaru. Under her feet, Krush's eyes rolled back, vomiting profuse, profuse amounts of blood. <coughs> Although no trauma was visible, it was plain to see that she had suffered a life-threatening injury. With the only person in their group able to use healing magic, Garfield, far from them, the current situation was worse than a, was the worst of scenarios. Didn't you find it strange at all? Here at the city hall, where the city is managed, why would there be a child meet? But your first reaction was doubtlessly, Ah, this kid is in danger, I have to save her. No! What a disappointingly stupid train of thought! Shut, shut up already! There's plenty I'd like to say first. But first, move your damn foot! Hmm? Are you so captivated by my beautiful legs that you're dripping already? Or are you thinking of the female meat that's desperately licking my feet? Indeed, she has a lovely body. Or are you, are you trying so hard that you can't restrain yourself right now? <laughs> you bitch! Bastard! We're not just creatures for you to tread on! Capella wore an ecstatic expression as her heel was driven into Crucia's sternum again and again. In response to her atrocious actions and ridicule, Subaru's veins boiled with rage. His lower body tensed, ready to move forward. Capella, who had provoked Subaru, seemed to welcome an attack. However, Subaru was not so foolish as to blindly rush forward. Even without her memory, Krush was a fearsome warrior. Wilhelm had vouched for her strength, allowing her to partake in this battle. And yet, in the span of a few seconds, without Subaru's sight focus on her, she had lost without posing any resistance. There was no doubt that lust strength was undoubtedly far above Subaru's. Therefore, Subaru needed to solve the situation without engaging her in combat. <sighs> Krush, whose very life was in danger, needed to be saved immediately and taken to Julius and the others. It was up to him to engineer an escape, abandoning their mission in the process. That was the, the most priority. Even though they would fail to stop the broadcast, that mission was not as important as their lives. And they also had not found people who they should be rescuing, at least not on this floor. His only conclusion was that they did not possess enough material strength to retake the city in secrecy. And they also had Therefore, not found people Zuru who could not hesitate. they should be rescuing. Huh? <laughs> Capella exhaled, slightly surprised by Subaru's sudden action. The target of Subaru's whip was not Capella, but a shelf running along the side of the wall. He found a metal bust, large enough to be embraced by two arms, and wrapped it with his whip. 
deftly flicking his wrist and throwing it towards Capella. Subaru now wielded a high-speed metal whirlwind as a weapon, and he now held much more power, enough to open a hole in the wall. Whether to block or evade, she would need to remove her foot from Krush. Subaru would not take advantage of that moment to revive. Subaru would take advantage of that moment to retrieve her. Take that! I will. Huh? In contrast to the Subaru's spirited shout, Capella responded with casual words. Immediately after, the sound of a hard object encountering bones and flesh was accompanied by blood spurting forth from Capella's forehead, which had been torn almost completely apart. She had not even bothered to protect herself. The inside of her scalp was visible, and blood stained her cheeks. Subaru could no longer bear to look at what originally been a cute face. Her left eye had been half destroyed, and the light had vanished, but it nonetheless remained fixed on him. This unexpected situation left Subaru's mind momentarily blank. His actions had been intended to distract the enemy, but he had been caught off guard instead. A Sin Archbishop certain, certainly would not let that moment go. Aren't you an adorable little thing? The thing that I'd play right into the palms of your hand? Isn't this kind of helpless stupidity problematic for you? <laughs> Capella's ridicule slipped into Subaru's frozen thoughts. The girl turned to face the Subaru, still rigid, and in the next moment, a gust of black wind hit him, abruptly sending him flying. <gasps> As if he had been smacked by a giant, his right half took a heavy blow, and Subaru was knocked into the table, before rolling onto the ground. His entire body was shook, and he dizzily climbed to his feet, porting himself against the wall. What he saw next was... What's wrong? Are you so stunned by my beauty that you can't even move? What the fuck is that? You actually have to ask? Just use your eyes for once! Capella happily shook her hips in a dance and Subaru was unable to articulate a cry of anguish. The girl's short skirt swayed, and protruding from it, its hem, was a dragon's tail, thick and black, which had just been used to attack Subaru. The disconcerting appearance of a petite girl spliced with the mighty tail of a dragon imprinted itself on Subaru's conscience. What would a person even have to say about that? Could you be a human that can transform into a dragon? Your hopeless brain couldn't even realize the truth upon impact! Even after this gentle lady has given you so many hints here or there, you still couldn't reach it, you helpless scummy meat! <gasps> Capella waved her tail lightly as Subaru took in her physiology and identity. Her long tail slammed from overhead, and the ground cracked as Subaru barely threw himself aside in time, but... Being relieved is quite naive of you. <gasps> However, as he prepared to pull himself to his feet, Subaru was hit by her gigantic left fist. As he bounced away, he took another hit from the dragon tail awaiting him, and after a violent impact with the ceiling, was slashed by razor-sharp feathers, finally coming to a stop on the ground. Coughing violently as the impact sent him rolling across the floor, he witnessed the true face of the terror that had assaulted him. Where before there had only been a black tail, now there was fist covered in bestial hair. Then came the black tail from before, and finally, a pair of bird wings, with feathers sharp enough to slash across Subaru's body, and these all belonged to that young girl's form. You should have just, you should have just about figured out the answer, right? Alien was the only word that came to mind. A dragon's tail, a beast's arm, the wing of a great bird, all perfectly fused to a human girl's body. He could not think of any other suitable words to describe her. Other than words, a sense of physical aversion rose upon gazing at this creature that shouldn't exist. He could feel nothing but a sense of disgust towards the monster in front of him. Variation. Transformation. I'm a sin archbishop of lust, Capella Emirata Lagunica. All the love and respect of this world exists to be monopolized by myself alone. If someone loves me, no matter how abnormal their desire is, 
I'll respond. In short, I'm the ultimate embodiment of all kinds of virtue and beauty in the world. Any girl matching your preferences, I can become. Hey, I'm a woman who does her best, aren't I? <laughs> While Waintonly speaking nonsense, Capella turned her face to Subaru and began to freely change her form. She shifted from her abnormal shape back to the tiny girl, but her hands and feet and then Im then immediately extended to become the curvy body of a grown woman. Just as Subaru realized this, she changed into a few into a few simple village girls, but in the next moment she had become a maiden with an innocent face and a lewd smile. Now how do you like me? Speechless, he was unable to say anything. One glance and he realized that the worst was that it was the worst possible situation. She was a desecration of human value. Despite being so simple, straightforward even, the authority of lust desecrated the temp the trampled on all value, so that the holder would be the only one loved thing in the world. Looking at her, Subaru saw that a wound marrying her face had been long healed without any trace of the injury. Her terrible ability to regenerate, or rather, her ability to transform, had long cured her old injuries. In any case, the mystery of how the dragon had become a girl was solved. He had originally thought she was like Beetlejuice, able to possess the bodies of others, but if that were not the case, <sighs> if that were not the case, then what had happened with the girl, the dragon from earlier, and the flies inside the broadcast room? Have you finally realized it? Wait. 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 Wait a second. As if she had read his innermost thoughts from his facial expression, Capella broke into rashes, mocking laughter. She had become a graceful lady with long hair, and even the sound of her laughter changed as well. In this situation, where he was uncertain of who he was even speaking to, Subaru shook his head. No way. It was impossible. It couldn't be true. However, were he right, everything that had happened could now be explained. Capella's authority of lust allowed her to change and transform her own body. And if this ability of hers were effective on objects other than her physical body... Has your waterlogged brain finally realized the identity of those disgusting flies? They... They... Mm-hmm. Hurry and give your answer, and I'll hear you out! <laughs> Capella covered her mouth with her hand and laughed, loudly and proudly. His heart of hearts unable to endure the horror, Subaru said in a trembling voice, There... people... in this building... who you've transformed. Correct? But you were pretty slow, so no prizes. I won't compliment you. Ah, pointless scum! What's your defective brain for? That's my lord! Capella did not look remorseful about this brutal atrocity in the least. Needless to say, she had just stuffed those people into a dark room. When their red compounded eyes had fixed on Subaru, their wings, which were not capable of flight, had been flapping desperately issued a loud, buzzing flutter. They must have been asking for his help then. There's something wrong with your head! Why? How could you do such a thing? Why would you do it? Turning people into flies. Why? It's horrifying, right? It's beyond twisted! You. You. You! Maybe it's just because I can't help but create disgusting creatures. Again, Dubru could not find the words to respond. With harsh breaths and clenched teeth, Subaru fixated on her with a fiery, intense gaze of hatred, his blood red and pure murderousness. She would toy with the lives of others, even turning them into flies. Those atrocities were even worse than murder, much worse. In the past few hours, Subaru had successfully encountered four Sin Archbishops who he had never met before. Sirius of Wrath, a madwoman who manipulated the emotions of others and imposed selfish love. Regulus of Greed, a villain who self-righteously and forcefully imposed his own values upon others. 
Alphard of Gluttony, a blasphemer who stole memories and names from people, a poison that eroded the natural course of human life, and Capella of Lust, a monster who stripped away both human dignity and identity. They were all hopeless, cursed with madness. In contrast to Subaru, so enraged the blood vessels in his head were about to burst, Capella had settled into a bored silence. In the next second, she took a mocking tone. Washed by Subaru's anger, Capella spoke. Indeed, it's annoying and disgusting. That's exactly why! Facing Subaru's unbridled fury, Pella wore a smile more pleasant than the other she had previously worn. She clapped her hands together, pointing to the room packed with flies. When you look at a room full of stupid, giant flies, you get a horrible se sense of physiological disgust. Isn't that right? Of course, that's only natural. No matter who looks at those ugly creatures, they can't help but want to run. They can't stand it. That's right. What? Does that... No matter who, everyone feels disgusted with that ugliness. And those scummy pieces of meat has become dreadful pieces of shit, looking beyond horrible. It's a matter of course that no one would love them. That's also natural. What? What are you trying to say? Human beings, however, are creatures that can't live without loving or being loved. But when their loved ones have become such creatures, no matter how much they want to, they just can't bring themselves to love them. In that case, they redirect their loves to others. No matter how reluctant they are, they just can't love anything dirty. His mind went blank. Tilting her head slightly, she spoke her incomprehensible, monstrous words. Listening to her clapping, Subaru was overtaken by a desire to escape. Now immediately, without hesitating for even a second, he wanted to disappear to a place without this monster. His body did not wish those eyes to be fixed on him. His ears did not wish to hear that voice directed at him. And his mind did not wish to remember that existence in his presence. All in a sense of physical disgust. Was she not the embodiment of aversion? Of psychological, biological repulsiveness? Something which he was genuinely unable to understand. Was that not the definition of horror that stood before him? So gentle and merciful, I really am the perfect woman. Since it was decided that I'd monopolize all the world's love and respect, then I absolutely can't slack on my duty. In order to be loved better, I'll work hard to be loved and change myself to suit your taste. In order to capture your attention, I'll take away everything you're interested in. Everything but me. It doesn't matter who you loved originally. You'll choose me in the end. I'll work hard to make that happen. I'll improve, improve, increase, perfect, improve, 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 improve my own charm. And reduce, 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 reduce the charm of the meats who aren't me. Anyone, no matter who, would fall for this world's most beautiful and charming me. Just kill me already. Why? I'm a philanthropist. How could I be so brutal as to kill you? Even if you're worthless scum, there's still a chance that if there's still a chance that you love me, even if there's a tiny, slight chance for every single person, I'll let them live even one more second till they'll give me my due, due praise. Only those who are not able to do so will be killed. After all, Capella Sum is commendable, most praiseworthy woman. <sighs> I see now. Do you really? Well, now that you understand, quickly give me your words of appreciation to Capella-sama. Let yourself be melted by Capella-sama's love and become my favorite piece of meat. Fucking die. He could not think, but there was no need to think. The enemy in front of him was truly the most vicious enemy. Everything other than the piece of knowledge was entirely unnecessary. Subaru's whip suddenly flew forward. The monster jerked backwards as her face suddenly attacked, removing her foot from Krush. Taking advantage of that opening, Subaru immediately moved, picking up Krush. See, after all, male meat longs for female meat. Your fluids won't stop leaking. Didn't you deny it earlier? Didn't you weave so many beautiful words? Don't you like beautiful things? Don't you like cute things? Don't you like soft and comfortable things? Don't bullshit me! 
chasing Subaru. Capella spread her arms apart while spitting spoken venom. One hand turned into the head of a snake while the other became the head of a lion. Those distorted heads chased Subaru, showing their canines as they prowled up and down the floor of the room. Although his right foot had began to bleed again, he still felt no pain. It did not matter anyway. Feeling the warmth and weight of a person in his arms, making every effort to protect the woman he carried, Subaru focused every last bit of his athletic ability on dodging Capella's pursuit. Don't you care so much for that scummy female me? Then for the rest of your short life, hold tightly and don't let go. That tempting body, those alluring eyes, those sweet lips and the adorable voice that escapes them. That pleasant meat, meat, meat. Because she's stimulating, you're clinging desperately to her, unable to let go. Oh, die! Die! Go die! Go die right now! Do not talk nonsense, bastard! I'm not that kind of person! Shut the fuck up! Male scum should just obediently stay put and emanate the stench of rubbish! Female shows should obediently stay put and emanate the stench of an animal! Have you never thought of it? Can you honestly say that you've never thought of anything perverted for even a second? Does that one second mean that it's that kind of relationship between a male and a female me? What's the difference? What's the difference? Tell me what the difference is! Snake and the lion writhed at it, as if reflecting Capella's excitement, twisting across the room. The sound of teeth crunching and chewing on a wooden desk, dissembling its body, sent its legs flying. The same force sought th Subaru, trying again and again to reach him. Caught in the center of that destructive storm, issuing a pained cry, Subaru guarded Kirsch's body as he desperately avoided those continuous attacks. Capella stood at the exit of the room, even if he wanted to take the opportunity to escape, Capella's body expanded and contracted, changing back and forth between woman, girl, and child in an anomaly that looked to be taboo. Don't you want to stroke her hair? Don't you want to brush her lips? Don't you want to hold her body? Those cheap thoughts are always justified with beautiful words, with love as an excuse. Love is beautiful, isn't that right? just a self-righteous justification? Aren't you using beautiful words to cover up your desires? Yeah! Admit your lust directly! Don't try to hide it behind love! Or are you refusing to say it? Refuting what's already been determined? Say it! I love her! I love her because of her own nature! Her nobility! Her gentleness! Her compassion! Her temperance! Her eyes that reflect the sky! Her way of life that makes her willing to live for the sake of others! Her strength to endure injustice! Her vulnerability that she shows only to me! I don't want to leave her alone! Her reassuring voice! Her loving gaze! Her compassionate eyes, her lips that call my name so gently, her warmth that grips both of my hands, her touch that rouses my heart, her beautiful hair swaying in the wind. Because fate brought us together, because I believe that only she would have accept me, because she would stay always by my side when my heart was pain, because she taught me so many important lessons, because we have been together for all, all, all this time. I want to see and feel the same things that she does from now until forever, because we promised, I swore to never forget that vow, because I find her different from all others, and only she knows who I truly am, because I can't pretend to be something I am not in front of her, because I was so lonely, I always wanted someone to understand me, because you reminded me of those first feelings, and taught me what it means to truly love someone, you were the one who wiped those tears from my face, you were the one who emerged from the boundless sea of people to find me, you were the one who hugged me tightly when I was about to break, you were the one who scolded me for my naivety for the first time. You were the one who... You were the one to scold me like no one had ever scolded me before. You were the one to speak to me in a way that did not patronize me. You were the one who took me to see so many sights I'd never seen before. You were the one who took my hand and led me out of my birdcage. No matter what, you... You support me. No matter what, you understand me. We're meant to be together. Always. I can't live without me. You're my everything. You love me because I love you too. Because your chest is so warm. Because without you, all of the colors of the world shine so brightly. I can feel a happiness without you. I can't live without you. In this world so filled with lies, only this is true. With a still expression, Capella spit those words out as if they were cursed. As she spoke this long, touching confession, Capella's face was intertwined with beauty, adoration, obscenity and with even more complex and strange expression. All of them! All of them! All of them! Aren't they just sweet nothings? Those were our words only meant for comforting others. What's the harm in 
removing them? Do they have any sincerity? Any character? They're merely nauseating nonsense. How annoying! Acts! They're nothing but acts! In truth, you, you've you only been attracted by the appearance of that meat. If you really love those two whom you speak with affectionate words and share affectionate touches and pillow talk with, see what happens when they become a fly! Could you love them? Are you not afraid of them? Are you not disgusted? Of course you are! You feel nothing but disgust oozing from your every pore! Well, think about what I've said. Sane verbal abuse, a delusion of victimization, jealousy, hate, self-obsession. Spit splashing across the room. Capella lost control of herself as she hysterically destroyed the room. The snakes hiss, the lions roar, Capella's cries. Subaru could not stand to listen to them any longer. The noise became like a storm, and the room began to collapse. No matter what he did, he could not see anything past the smoke. Did he still have his feet on the ground? Was the right leg safe? The only thing he was certain was the heartbeat of the woman in his arms, which continued to infuse Subaru with determination. But even such a fight would come to an end here. Hey, Meat! I can see you! Huh? Breaking through the smoke, the lion's head suddenly rushed in. Then the fangs snapped at Subaru's right leg, which had already lost half of its flesh. And so, what was left of his leg below the thigh was torn off completely, blood spurting forth fiercely. The injury had already directly exceeded the limits of Ferris's healing ability, and Subaru's mind began to boil as he struggled through the pain of losing his right leg. He issued a mute, violent cry of ag ag agony, his throat unable to bear it. Of course, he could not support his own body anymore. As he collapsed, Krush rolled onto the ground in front of him, and his blood began to overflow. That was no exaggeration. It looked as if a bucket of blood had been suddenly overturned. It was clear that Subaru's life force was dwindling rapidly. Oh, what a headache! It seems that I couldn't help but get excited. How impolite of me! <laughs> Maintaining his position on the ground, Subaru struck one convulsing hand to his wound. Although the palm of his hand was blocking the wound, the momentum of the bleeding had not diminished. In fact, another feeling began to well up inside Subaru's body. Soon, everything would end. This was the familiar feeling of death, which gradually approached Subaru. In just a few hours, he had felt the pain of losing his right leg twice. His complexion transcended paleness, onto a yellow pallor, and his breath sped up and up as his eyes grew bloodshot. Oh my, my! Aren't you about to die? Watching the agony of this piece of meat is in is particularly distressing for my compassion itself who feels for others. <laughs> the piece of meat that you've been projecting is also going to die soon. It's such a shame that I indulged in my hobby a little bit and decided to see if she's loose to my blood. Oh, that's right. Capella squatted down glancing at Subaru's twisted, agonized face. Then the monster smiled and stretched a hand onto the wounded leg. I wonder what kind of unsightly meat you'll become! As she spoke, Capella turned her hand into a blade, cutting into the hand that had been caressing Subaru's wound until now. And bit by bit, her blood dripped onto Subaru's stump of a right leg. Black blood blended together with red blood, forming a rather indecent scene, and right after- My blood is different from other people's blood. After all, mine is mixed with a dragon's blood, which contains a great curse. I wonder if you will last longer than that female me. Capella hummed happily, but Subaru could not form any kind of reply. His entire being was already half dead and even his pain had become sluggish. Just a second before he died, the blood that had invaded his body via his right leg wound ravaged and eroded him. As if a foreign body with self-awareness had entered his body, a fear of much higher degree than that of a regional pain overtook Natsuki Subaru, as if attempting to completely rewrite his existence while merging with him. Unable to understand, he was not allowed to even, even the mercy of death. And as that monster had said, 
Pruche was the same. She was suffering identical pain. If she had to endure such pain, would she be better off dead? Let us die. Let us die. Let me die. Let me die. Let me die. I don't want to die. <laughs> well then, the invaders have been taken care of. Well, it's about time that I... After looking back and forth at Subaru and Krush, collapsed in agony, Capella stood satisfied. She reverted to the petite girl's form, her tail vanishing as she headed toward the broadcast room. Swaying her hips, suddenly she paused as if noticing something. Her gaze fell on the wall that had been destroyed by the black dragon which served as a decoy. My, my. They were pretty decent after all. And after having fallen from the building only short a while ago, the black dragon had crawled up from the side of the building. Seeing its enemy, it gave a deafening roar, before breathing a mouthful of black flames towards Capella. At that moment, the upper floor of the city hall was engulfed by jet black flames. And that ends Arc 5, Chapter 36, and our reading. Amazing Holy job, Jace! Fuck, Amazing Jace. fucking Great job! Great job, Jace! Jesus Christ! Make How did you rant that long? Take care of that throat. How did you rant that long as Capella? <laughs> My throat hurt. Like I almost want to say I want to get this scene like you know how Willow does her animatics like get this <laughs> at an animatic but my god that means you have to rant again <laughs> <laughs> can we get a hand for Jace can we get some W's in chat can we get some form of good Jace. job amazing also, fucking job Wolf, Jace great, great upset Subaru great upset yeah. Subaru Top I off. seem to be able to project anger pretty well at Subaru at the moment. That so. was great. Holy shit. Amazing job, everyone. I'm guessing Lightning had to dip out in between. Yeah, he's probably got to go to Damn work. it. So, uh, good old Kyle's Megayos, what did you think of this chapter? <laughs> well, uh, from the words I didn't stumble on, um, holy shit, Capella's fucking OP as shit. I've never seen, <laughs> like... Wow! Capella 2 OP, please nerf. <laughs> please, please. Oh my gosh. Um, wow. Okay, Jace, uh, for one, I don't know how you maintain that the whole time. That was amazing. Uh, great job, Wolf, with Subaru as well. That was super intense, and I was getting really into it while reading. Holy shit, okay. Um, a hundred dollars from Lid Little Fan. Some funding for the ReZero gang, and Chapter 36 was one of my favorites. We also got a $4.20 dono from Roman Morales, saying that, basically praising Jace for their VA work. Great Yay! job. Amazing yeah. job. Amazing job for Jace. Amazing fucking job. Holy sh- I, The scenes like this, um, we were talking to Gold about getting certain scenes animated. And even if it's just like, is Will still in this call, actually? I know Will yes. jumped in. Hey Willow, how's oh, it going? What's what's popping? Uh, uh, it's going good. You know how you did that the little animatic for our thing, but it was like not colored. It was just like still images, but slightly reactive yeah. to what we were saying. I will I will fund I I will, I will give funds to do Capella screaming at Subaru. With, <laughs> with I would this. love to do that. It it seems like a really just impactful scene, cause like. Up until this point, Sirius has had a rant, Regu's had a rant, and now Capella went completely off the fucking rails. This is also the most yeah. angry we've we've probably we've ever seen Subaru. Seen Subaru yeah. Ever. Yeah, like, his... You see, there's some... The, the closest he ever come to, like, someone that he just couldn't understand was Gluttony, uh, the Witch of Gluttony. But this is... The kind of person that he considers pure evil. He fucking. Despise. I really hope I captured like the despise and hatred he feels towards this person, like someone who treads on life so much and manipulates others just because she Christ feels almighty. like it. She and her motives are fucking twisted. Can we just talk well. about? Can we also talk about? So, I don't know if you guys got this vibe, but how many of you have seen Demon Slayer? Like the Demon Slayer. Me, series? I haven't. Oh, oh, hey, Gold, what's oh. up? Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Hi, I've Gold! Seen well. um, the scene where Capella, like, fucking... I don't know what happened with her her blood with Subaru and the mutation. Kind of reminds you of, like, what Muzan can do with, like, basic humans. 
if he injects that his blood into them. Spider fellow. Oh, is right? that how she transforms people? What the fuck was that? <laughs> you good? Yeah. Um. Basically, that's how. Well, it's kind of spoilers for Demon Slayer, but yeah, it has something to do with. It's not Luzon's really. Blood. You see him do it once already in the first season. Yeah, with the, guys with the, the random alleyway. thugs. Yeah, in yeah. the alleyway. That's what happens if it's rejected. There's... But yeah, it's uh... Christ. Yeah, all, all those flies in that cupboard. That, yeah. that buzzing noise you heard earlier when she was broadcasting. That was nuts. She, she turned all those people in that that were there into flies. All of them. I that... I can't imagine what this will look like animated. This is like a, a point in my or in the readings where I hope uh, you foldable cops on board for shit like, like this. Yeah, right. Uh... And like, God, like the the uh, amount of emotion going through Subaru in this moment, like the the horror, the fear, the anger, like it's so fucking intense. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, these past chapters are very intense. Like, these three chapters are just very... Yeah, specifically, yeah. Yeah, they're crazy. A lot of emotion, a lot this of... This has really set up Capella to be a pretty good villain in my eyes. What do you guys think? <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, her power set is just crazy in general. It's, um, it's, it's really creative and interesting as well. Yeah, and it fits with her, as she was saying herself, like her sort of ideals and her personality and whatnot yeah and her, her the way she views the world which like every other archbishop is incredibly weird wrong and twisted <laughs> i yeah. just i just feel like this is really putting into perspective like how fucked they are in this loop with yeah not only serious and then regulus but now with um roy and capella and they're, they're all they're up against extremely dangerous. Really strong yeah. foes. Yep, those are yeah. four center bishops in the same city. Then they have two grunts that are fucking super strong. That are the same Super level. fucking yeah. strong. I'm curious. Perhaps even stronger than some <laughs> base archbishops. Haha, <from> <laughs> get fucked. Insane. I'm curious to see <laughs> where the reset occurs, though. Like, where he's gonna snap back to. Yeah. If I was to have a guess, I'll say it's when he wakes up just after getting healed from the when he loses Amelia to... Oh, that would be... Oh, fucked. yeah. So yeah. He, he's stuck with, not, with Amelia being captured. Kind of well, thing. Well, that would make sense. Well, you know, it would make sense. I don't see him resetting all the way back to Liliana before he goes and sees Sirius. That would be way too long. Mm. Like a reset point. Capella versus Regulus versus Sirius rant battle when? Uh, that'll be the 100k <laughs> I mean subspecial. It's it's um long from a story perspective, but from like an actual like in universe time perspective, it's actually quite a short period of time. No, it is, but in terms of just like storytelling, what to pay? There's a lot happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Like to pay, yeah, isn't wouldn't really set back the story that far, realistically. Capella's an actual threat. Like Capella, yeah. Every every single archbishop is a threat. I think we've uh, we've established. Yeah, I am. Oh my oh, god, that's terrifying <laughs> so far. I had I had one of the people from Lounge. Do you know GC Typo Jays? Uh, yeah, I've seen them around. He literally messaged me and he's like, "My God, I fucking jumped out of my chair." <laughs> <laughs> a tee -hee. So we have um not really a light novel illustration, but we have a character design unlocked for this oh that's really big holy shit let's minimize that down that's still really large all right good job hollow there we go there's capella's full design um we have the two kids and garrick so that's the last thing that we have from these set of readings unfortunately i'm really hating this too now that we're taking a break but fuck, i want to go ahead uh we're gonna be taking Lightning a week long break what, what the hell is that on what the hell is that on their on her back bro what is that? Oh, <laughs> uh, Jace. That fat ass. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm about to... What did Lightning say? Lightning's bringing up the the cursed royal blood of the... Is he bringing up Felt? Yes. Okay, what did he say? Yeah. He just asked, he's like, cursed blood Felt, also tr the truth in some of Capella's words. Uh, the cursed royal blood, someone please, lol. <laughs> Well, I think good old Subaru Sama should be explaining that. Professor what do you want me to Wolf? explain? I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a fucking guru. Give me of the ending to ReZero, Uwu. So, uh, 
A lot of it has to do with EX Volume One, so that's really? that's all that I can say. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, what were you asking specifically about? Let's anyway? do the let's do like, the cursed blood. Oh, the cursed blood, or like, like the blood itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like the okay. You know, is it the same with like the royal family or? So I mean that that's the question, right? That's the speculation. Like, is is it the same? I mean. If it's the same kind of blood, like it being cursed, makes sense, right? That would you could, that might be the disease that killed the royal family. That's yeah, true. Like, that is could, an unnamed. That's right. Yeah, it, because it only killed the royal family. It could be something in their bloodline. That's right. Was that included um, in the anime, or was that a was that a cut? It's a it's a cut. Yeah, it's a cut. It's a cut. Yeah, it's a cut. For the life of me. Yeah. I know they. I know they mentioned the the um. The like blessed dragon's blood the of the royal family. The scene had a lot more dialogue. Yeah. Than what was shown. Um. But if Capella is royalty, and her blood is that dragon's blood, like the same as the royal family's, and it's cursed. I mean, she could be like the reason <laughs> the royal family's dead. <laughs> you know? Damn, yeah. Capella. True. <laughs> 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 Why? <laughs> We're done with the readings, Jace. That wasn't even in character. I was just... Just your average Tuesday killing a royal family. Yep. Just your average Tuesday. <laughs> I mean, oh, this hurts. could this could, this could, could have even been, like, something pushed by um the witch cult as an organization to make Lagunica a less stable nation. That's very true. Like, like, like what is the best way to make a, <laughs> a monarchy unstable? No monarch. No any monarch. Like... <laughs> You've also got to remember that Lagunica, without the Dragon Covenant, is very, very prone to invasion. The biggest deterrent they have now is Reinhardt, but Reinhardt can only be in one place. When it comes to large-scale battles, Lagunica could be in like, huge danger. Yeah. Yeah. Reinhardt has the divine protection of cloning, obviously, so oh, he can no, make a million of themselves. And well, we they see. all stay at the same power as normal Reinhardt does, so it's just an army of Reinhards fighting just the entire world. That's how ReZero is going to be. Well, you know. know. If he could do that, I'm pretty sure he would have done that already. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't the future trial that Amelia saw, like, in a dilapidated version of the throne of, uh, room? Yeah, throne room. Yeah. Throne room. Yeah. yeah. So there was yeah. speculation about, like, you know, an enemy attack occurring there. And the fact that Reinhardt's their only main deterrent is it's kind of really bad. Yeah, if they don't have a covenant with a dragon to protect the country, they're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something's noticed, is, right? And this uh, is especially true considering that they're, they're neighbored by like three other countries, right? Yeah. Like they they could be invading all sides theoretically. Something that I don't know is: Have we ever seen Volcanica? No. I think uh, in the storybook um, is the only time we've no. seen like an no. image. We've only seen reference to Volcanica. If Capel's yeah. a black dragon, is Volcanica a black dragon? Yeah, yeah, this uh, is true. Hmm. Was yeah, it I was just about to ask. Blood? Because this is the thing, it's the source of that dragon's blood from Volcanica, right? Like, you would assume well, so with the covenant. Exist, so. Yeah, I don't know. Well, we know other dragons exist, but it wouldn't really make sense for the dragon's blood to... We know, know there's ground dragons. dragons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's different types, that, but... I feel like that's like, almost like a descendant species, you know? Like, yeah. that's not really... Like, what... If it's... If it's not Volcanica's blood, why isn't it, right? Like, why wouldn't it be Volcanica's blood? You'd think as a covenant, like, formed with the royal family, he would offer his own. Right. So and again, why was it cursed? Yeah, why was it cursed? Now, okay. was it cursed to begin with, or did it become cursed? I Maybe feel like Wolf knows. And he's just like, why is it cursed? Why? Huh. I know that there's a side story that people kept telling me to read regarding royal or regarding the dragon blood. Or not a side story, an if story. I can't fucking remember really? which one it was. Yeah. You sure? Uh, all right. Uh, by the way, if if I may uh, interject, this is something to chapter. Um, actually, the first chapter we read today. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I think about the fight, or at least something about Valgrin, like when Wilhelm mentioned fighting the big fuck off dragon. That I think is in some side story out oh, there. Oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So I, it's called yeah. the it's called it's called the Sword Demon Battle Ballad or something. Oh, it's Battle yes, Ballads. That, oh, yes. Ba oh. Battle Ballads. Yes. Well, I haven't read them, that. but yes, that's what they. I called. have to be honest. 
Yeah, people are good. There are, there are quite a few Wilhelm side stories. Yeah, well, one of the, yes, two, uh, yeah. one of the interludes from Arc 4 to Arc 5, the one that I think Ice just recently posted, had to do with Wilhelm just starting um, to form like an alliance with the Krush camp or becoming a part of the Krush camp. So we got oh, to see, shit. like, yeah, it's it's posted now. It's, um, I gotta read that. Yeah, I know Fanta told me about it, and I was like, oh, it's in this document, but it's not on WCT. And he's like, oh, fucking hell. He's like, give me a second. <laughs> And they posted it. So it was, yeah, it's something to do with, like, when Krush and Wilhelm first meet. Like, that's awesome. how that all, yeah, so that was, like, one of my favorite um, interlude chapters that I read. It's really interesting just how in-depth a lot of these characters are. Yeah, actually. And how connected everything is, yeah. Yeah. Aren't there, like, 160-something chapters of side story? Yeah, there's there, a there is, there is a huge fucking... I'm yeah, still, there's, like, like two arcs or something. Ridiculous. Yeah, I'm still on the lookout um, for that one side story that no one has translation to. Which one? I need to, I need to go find it. Give me a second. Unfortunately, yeah. there's a lot of um, side stories that are exclusive to certain things. So yeah, it's really hard to get access yeah. to them to even begin to translate them. Yeah, but it is possible. Sometimes no, it, it is, happens. It it's just, just slowly. Odd. Yeah. Fun fact, I used to be basically caught up with all the side stories. Uh, but yeah, neither here nor there. <laughs> yeah, I, I, funnily enough, I just haven't touched many side story content. I've touched EF stories and that's about it. Only the EF routes? So, yeah, only the EF routes, yeah. When I've been able to read them when they've not been uh, filled with spoilers. <laughs> uh, I need to go find it. I need to go find it in my um my liked. Oh shit! Because I think it's on Ice's Twitter that he posted about, it, and I was like, "Holy shit, you found it!" And he was like, "Nope." I'm seeing if anybody's read it, and I was like, "Damn it!" Lorem Ipsum verb. Yes. I was so confused for a second. I thought you said Isis Twitter, and I was no, like, no, "Oh Ice. my god!" Ice, also, Ice. what I heard. No. Okay. So. Yeah. No. 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 That's not what I meant. I can put an they image don't do it on story, screen yeah. if that makes it easier. So if we have any international viewers, I will buy this off you for $100, no cap. Because I know it's worth like 120 to 130 and like no one's gotten their hands on it. And it's like, it's like an obscure side story, but the fact that it's the first one and it's untranslated, I, I really want to. So yeah, this is it. Oh, wait, uh, the the camp formation? No, it's a felt side huh. story. from. It was from the oh. first release of uh, Volume 1 back oh. in 2016. Whoa, whoa. That's it's some like a forbidden really obscure, knowledge. Really obscure piece. I played Prophecy of the Throne a little bit. Yeah, haven't beaten it. But yeah, this... Is... What is Lightning saying? Uh, he is saying another talking point um, could you love your family if they were giant insects, and how twisted it is to take someone's chance of love away for yourself to be seen? Oh, Capella's like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what she's doing. She's yes. essentially making it so no one else can love them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, mean, that's that's her philosophy, right? It's the she's idea literally, that like, turning herself into the last, you know, there's the whole thing's like, well, if they were the last person on earth would you bone them she's like i am the only boneable one <laughs> yeah but she, she wants she wants to literally she literally says that she wants to monopolize the love of everyone she wants to be loved by everyone can we talk about her rant going on about like that person quote unquote when she was like well um, we can spec i mean we can speculate basically that she's uh, she's the incel type right like she's <laughs> she's fell in love with someone <laughs> in the past and they either rejected her or they pushed her away yeah. at some point and it it stuck with her and that's what led down her down the path of lust and yeah where she so is now like hating uh hating like, lo love towards yeah, her entire um, rant was basically just like listing off like all the cheesy tropes you love, see in yeah. like romance and shit like that well, yeah you because know, like she every saved other, me she's so amazing like, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's like every other archbishop, their idea of something is completely superficial and wrong. Like Greed, for instance, and his idea of what love is. <laughs> I feel like all the archbishops have a skewed, like, reality of the sin that they represent. 
yeah, the, the, that's oh, sure. the biggest thing with the archbishops is that they don't see reality how it is. They see reality how they wish it was. Yeah. Well, like, like, um, I like think so, so far like most that. of the oh sorry, uh, most of the sin archbishops we've seen has have particularly had a skewed perception of love. We've yeah. had um, Juice uh -huh. with his like uh, obsession. obsessive love, uh, and we have um, Sirius with her belief that love is the sharing of you know. <laughs> Everything, everything. everything. Uh, Raw, yeah. greed with his belief of uh you know gotcha. uh, it's like love is, lives. Um, yeah and lust now with her belief that love is nothing but lust and it, right, and it um, can only and it should only oh, be directed wait. at her hold on so yeah that's up. what the story is uh, all about uh i gotta <laughs> go i gotta go to work but uh one uh, thing one, uh cap capella frequents r slash incels on a daily basis <laughs> <laughs> She's a, a mod. Have a good one, Swole. Oh, you too. Take it handy, man. Oh, yeah, yo, I gotta go, too. I have to eat lunch. It's 4.35 p.m. Oh, oh. shit. Yep, that's true. Enjoy your food. Bye. Goodbye, Dinner Super. At this point. Bye, Super. See you, Super. It is 10.36 a.m. Great job, Super. Thank you for listening. See ya. Oh, all I'm saying is, ReZero Episode 25's title is, That's All the Story is About. And, mm. uh, you know. I mean... It's it's like all of the Sin Archbishops in some way are opposed to Subaru's personal belief on things and have some small part of them that's reflected within Subaru. With Capella, it's not as easy to make a connection with as like with the other Archbishops, for instance. But like Subaru's idea of love and like his his show of affection and, and as he says to Amelia at one point, you can never have enough happiness, you can never have enough love, just share it. Capella has the complete opposite, like, opinion and stance on love, mm -hmm. where she wants to monopolize it. No one else can have it, only her. And that to Subaru, and watching her trample on the love of others and ruin people's lives, that's what right. makes Subaru before, hate her so much. You know... Sorry, just before we continue, some dude just popped in. Not able to catch us on live, but just wanted to thank you guys for doing these live readings, and props to all the VAs. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Nice. Kind words. Continue. You know... Thank Something you. that I want to say about um, some of the St. Archbishop's version of love is one in particular is greed, which is that, you know, he just wants love because of the thing that everyone else has. He doesn't actually understand what right. love is or anything like that. It just feels like because yeah, everyone else has it, he deserves to have it as well. Yeah, that's the association of materialism with him, right? Everything's yeah, materialistic. Yeah. Everything's an object for him to obtain. Mm -hmm. Also, um one thing that i notice or you know especially reading you can tell that like every single one of the synarch bishops when they talk about love love is capitalized like it's a, yes. a thing and that's I mean, something that i always notice it's yeah. well i mean it seems to be like the only really shared core belief system of the witch cult as a thing like it's it's shared belief system whether it's love for the witch of envy love for oneself obsession with oneself wanting others to love your, you or what your idea of love is being pushed onto others they they, I mean, they all have some sort of you know like big ideology that it can be associated with love in some way yeah and like sirius just comes in and she's like let's confirm something about love you know yeah i mean that's that's yeah. her she, i mean it's literally like a religious question for her at this stage mm -hmm. right like it's a spiritual question of what is love and yeah, that's yeah. what she is trying to determine <laughs> with her own twisted witch cult <laughs> ways of doing things. I mean, you mm -hmm. can literally list out, list off every single character, and then think about their relationship to love, and it makes complete sense, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's it's probably one of the biggest themes of the witch cult in opposition to Subaru as a character. Yeah, yeah. and every other character, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Especially it's just, it's right make... now, and yes, you know, every, it's everybody. just easier to make the connection with Subaru because thematically they're the ones who oppose him the most reinhardt with his family you yeah know, um, yeah everyone else you know it's, it's like that but um yeah all of the archbishops like the way like how insane they are how wrong they view the world they must have had to go through like fucking I loads mean, of trauma they, to they, a person well, like they they've said it themselves you know they're um you know mortal so they've lived a long time for the most yeah. part um every one of them I, I forget if we were we brought this up off stream i think about that they never really process their emotions because it's too painful for them so that they become this weird right. twisted mess of a person you know like 
they've definitely gone through some awful things. We know from Juice even just by himself, right? But, like, he never really takes a moment to really, you know, even think about it. I mean, maybe not even from his olden fault, considering what Pandora might have said to him. We and don't I, even know. Now, this is something to pay, like, this is, like, a kind of moral stance to pay takes within the story itself of... Subaru is the exact same. He goes through trauma. He goes through lots of bad experiences. But unlike the Archbishops, he grows and he overcomes his problems and sins. And he keeps on pushing to better himself. Whereas the Archbishops do not because they believe themselves to either be perfect or to be above change. Or can't understand why yeah. they should change. And it's it's perfectly exemplified in what Roswell says to um, Hector in Arc 4, which is like... Uh -huh. Through the limited choices you had available, you chose this path of sin. You chose the path of doing wrong and evil. Right. Whether or even if they suffered trauma, that doesn't excuse what they've done and the path they've taken. And Super is the perfect exemplifying example of, you know, the opposite of that. It, it is proof that despite the pain and the suffering, that doesn't like allow or justify the cruel and evil yeah i I, I think i think you know that's all true i also think it's it's interesting because in a perspective of the way that the synarch bishops act is that their lives were so awful that they never even had the chance to grow you know that's what we're being reflected back to subaru that yeah that's he stopped. has all I'm these opportunities yeah he has all this opportunity to go ahead and overcome these reflections that he sees in front of him. Right. You know, he has people around him that love him and that care for him, and then he's able to grow. I don't think a single one of the Synarch Bishops have a general, con genuine connection with anybody. Like, literally, they're pretty much islands of people. Like, you think about it, you've seen pretty much none of them have any friends or companionship. They don't see any sympathy for anybody else. They don't really seem to... I mean, it's besides serious, but yeah. Um, there is something, sorry to derail this one, that Lightning brought up, but also somebody in the comments brought up. Oh, nice. Uh, about Camilla and, um, Capella. So, uh, Brian said this, and then Lightning kind of reflected it, and everyone else echoing. Uh, Capella's authority allows her to appear as a manifestation of a person's highest desires. Compare her to Capella, who wants a, to corrupt any desire that a person holds above herself. Yes. It's, yes, It's that's like true. a inverse of, yeah. Yeah, uh, Camilla and then Capella, they're a bit different. Like, they're, they're pretty same, similar in, um, like, effect. But, like, the thing with Camilla is that she embodies it, and it's their own desire. But Capella can change and morph anybody into whatever she wants. You know, it's it's very... Um, it's reflective of her desires instead of the desires of others. others. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Honestly, if I may interject, it makes me wonder if uh, it's the love thing is exclusive, or at least mostly exclusive to the archbishops, or maybe if we ever learn anything more about the witches, will that also be somehow sprinkled in there? Yeah, that'd be interesting. I yeah. well, I mean, to know if, more about that. If we but... follow, if we follow the idea, the the idea behind the the only really unifying ideology of the witch cult, even though they have loads of different stances on it, so it's not really unifying, is love, right? Like. If you fit, they're not exactly a religious organization, but the only real big spiritual connection you can make between all of them is the idea of love. In some yeah, form. I think uh, yeah. I think it's interesting. The Synarch Bishop's obsession with love does not not necessarily seem to correlate with the idea of sin. You know, no. I, I think, um, for example, the witches and what we've heard about the backstory so far seem to not really have any necessarily relationship with love, but more so as like grander ideals and grander ways to uh, change the world yeah. and help people it seems I, as their their ideals were innocent in the sense that they want to help people through you know whatever happened whereas the archbishops are very much the opposite right they are man almost you know they're people that don't uh that don't follow the innocent and just path they they follow the complete opposite in is... their minds they're following the just path but it's not Obviously, but this is inspiring me to write a, a script right after this reading for like a, a fucking completely wrong interpretation of what I think about each of the archbishops right now. Hell yeah, go yeah, for it. Good. I'd love Ooh. to see that. Ah, uh, um, yeah, this is really these readings have really helped me get past creator's block because that my god, two months. But yeah, I'm I'm super hyped now that we're actually getting to a point where we're learning more about the Synarch Bishops, and in a sense, maybe we can learn more about the Witches, in the f hopefully, in the future. Even if it's like an Arc 6 thing. Chan. Cappy Chan. No, please, no. I mean, 
I'll call her Cappy Chan in like the Chris? entire video. Now, please, no. We please don't call her to... Cappy Chan. Oh, hey, oh, Fanta. God. How's it going, man? Hi, Fanta. We... Fanta I've been here for like 10 minutes. You don't talk, so. <laughs> I um, can't see you. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Now we we may be able to speculate on the nature of where this this kind of ideological obsession of with love comes from for the witch's cult. Now, who um, is someone we've seen manipulate someone into this kind of mindset in Arc Four? Wow, I wonder. Is it Pandora? Pandora, yes. Pandora mm -hmm. made Geese kind of fall to that ideology of everything he does is for love, right? Yes. Well, you see how yeah. you see how Pandora seems to get emotional she over people displaying this sort it's of... It's very much an ideology she shares, right? So it's... If she's, like, someone high up within the witch cult as an organization, it's very easy to yeah, assume that she's the one. And uh, her, her sin is vanity. And vanity, what is more vain yes. than thinking all about love and, you know... I mean, the, the arrogance of it, people. right? Like, yeah, well, yeah, in relation to yourself, like, feeling love and encapsulating that all within yourself, you know, that is what the Synarch Bishops do. And... I mean, the terrifying thing about uh, Pandora is is that her her showing of, like, um, like how she, like, really appreciates love is, is a facade. Like, it's not yeah, genuine. It's, one, it's one-sided obsession. It's not mutual, you know, love yeah, and it's... infection. And it's... Her obsession has, in her, her vanity, because, made her manipulate yeah. others into exploring that idea. You know, genuine love is usually selfless, but like there, a lot of the Synarch Bishops' love seems to be a selfish. crutch, a crutch yeah. for themselves rather than actually helping the people that they love. You know, like think about it. Like none of the Synarch Bishops, through all their declarations of love, seems to actually do anything genuinely kind or exactly. nice to help other people. Yeah, and you know? it's very and the, the irony of them talking down to others about their love as well, with that kind of attitude, it just shows. How the archbishops ideologically are just so hypocritical as people. They just yeah. can't see it because of who they are. When you think about and villains and stories, oh, sorry. And it's, it's why Subaru dislikes them so much as people. It's not because they do terrible things, it's because their attitudes towards the world are, are, are evil, really. Like, if if you look at it from his perspective, morally, though, it's an evil way to look at the world, it's an evil way to look at others, you know? Subaru is, is a very moralistic person. He's a very judgmental person when it comes to morals. And I this is why I made the connection with him in the previous reading to the Witch of Pride, Punching mm. Sin. Because Subaru is someone who when he sees a wrong, he wants to right it. And when he sees a someone who is evil, he wants to punish them. Like he's that kind of righteous moralistic person. Yeah, he is he's more virtuous than any Despite his bishops. his own sins, he you know, I mean, that's also another reason as to why Subaru dislikes himself so much, right? Like, it might, if you can see some of, like, these evil people, if you can see parts of them in yourself, you must feel fucking abhorrent, right? Thanks, Mizu, like... for the five. Hi, Mizu! He said, yeah. if we're talking about love, I love Emilia. <laughs> I love you too, Mizu! No! <laughs> oh, right. no. He's gonna have that cliff. Don't then. indulge <laughs> him. That's, oh. his, that's his ringtone. Welcome to his the Royal Guards, message. Ben 935, which could possibly be C Tactics Alt. Nice. Out him like that if it is. There was a. You know, there's some talk oh, in our yeah. general chat about um, authorities and like the implication that they could mm -hmm. extend the human lifespan. So that's also you know, interesting to I think mean, about. I mean, it's just because of the fact that Red when you look Boy. at it. Yeah, when you well, when you look at it, it's like okay, all these synarch bishops seems to have lived an absurdly amount of time. Yeah, like compared to their youth, like their youth in like, you know, appearance, like none of them seem old except for maybe Jews. But then even then, he's a spirit and he's lived for, I don't know how many years. It, Countless. It's, it's I mean, yeah. Time. If if, yeah. if my speculation about like his body is true, like the only reason that body hasn't died is because he's a spirit and his soul can you know not die naturally. Well, yeah, yeah. but because he and was like he said the he way said to um. Fortuna, that he was, Fortuna was a kid compared to him. Yeah. So, yeah. And Fortuna's quite old. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's in the sense of yeah. Geese, we can write it off, but like in the sense of Regu, who we know have been, you know, alive and I guess keeping his normal youth. He looks the exact same. Yeah. Yeah. He looks and, the exact and, same. and he he's very much can't like. explain away right now. Like, he, even with He Kapala. very much like when he's um, talking to um, Geese and he says, You worthless spirit, it's very much, you can assume that he's just an, he's a normal human, right? Yeah, he's like, not even a spirit. No. 
And you can say that like, Pella might just be because of her shape shifting and also because yeah, of her like her ability to regenerate. Or or so like yeah, if your cells can regenerate, you, if your cells can regenerate like that, you wouldn't probably be able to age. Yeah, yeah we don't know about gluttony yet either. So it's yeah. Kinda well, weird. the only one that we know besides yeah. you know the two aforementioned is going to have to be Regu because he's the one that we actually have backstory on or confirmation that. But this is active. also the important thing, right? Sloth and Greed are really the only known archbishops publicly. Well, yeah, like Julius because of how confirmed. big they, yeah, they've impacted the world, which means all these other archbishops are very seclusive and very secretive. Yeah, they're very elusive figures. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I mean, it makes sense for Gluttony because anyone they come across, well, again, <laughs> there's like a, a weird like discrepancy. Trump. Yeah, the only reason why Subaru even knew about Gluttony was through Puck. Puck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, Man. Yeah, it's how intricate just everything is woven together is very surprising too with a story like it's, this. I, I love how well knit together it is because it if you if you understand one thing you can use that as like a key to unlock the other thing to understanding, right? Yeah, like the sure. more and more you understand, the more and more you can understand the other things and guess and theorize. It's really fun. I think so we have we're at two hours fifty one. Are you guys fine ending off at like a solid three hours then? Sure, yeah. Yeah. Is there anything else oh, we want to bring? I know, like, me, Gold, and Wolf have been talking, but, like, any of you guys want to bring up anything from these chapters? Anything at all? Um, I had a, I had a note I wanted to bring up about Capella's appearance, just because I, I don't remember if we already talked about this, but the way that in, like, however many chapters ago, Ferris was talking about how he thought she was just impersonating Emirata, and she has the shape shape-shifting ability, I think think we don't know if the gold hair and red eyes are her natural appearance right now. Oh, that's very true. I don't think that's been confirmed. So she might still be impersonating a royal family member. I don't think we know. Oh, interesting. It's also something to think about. Yeah, who knows? If hey. she's the real one, who knows? I, I mean, know. Wolf probably does. But <laughs> Oh, uh, you're going to say something EMT? Maji Tenshi? No, I was just saying that's super interesting. Yeah, these we'll be right yeah. back though. These readings are really like motivating to get back on the archive stuff since I literally have like one at home test and then I'm done with the university. Nice. So yeah, looking forward to Yay. it. I can start grinding out content again. Daily uploads, daily streams. I'm gonna die. But it's worth it. <laughs> Don't burn yourself. I'm in danger. Out. I'm in danger. No. Can uh, I just say the like grunts and vomiting by everyone, like all those sort of hard to like portray, it, were done exceptionally well by everyone. They were just like really spot on. I I find it much easier to make noises than voice act. <laughs> <laughs> noises are fun. The noise. So yeah, I mean, as somebody who's never VA'd before, I think making those random like noises when there's no indication what's happening beforehand. You guys are doing a really good job with that, just adding a bit of spice to the story and not just skipping over like we did before. And the painful screams too, can't forget the painful screams. The painful yeah. screams, yeah. like the battle cries, the intense moments, like, we're really, I'm really proud of what we've I, done Yeah, this. I'd have to say Super does an amazing job of that with Carl. Yeah, this, <laughs> this arc yeah, has uh, cries. quite a lot of, you know, yelling and screaming and, you know. It is big fight, fight arc. General big emotion. Fight arc. Very, very heightened. Yeah, whenever, heightened whenever Poppy to pay comes and drops a, a house mortgage, we'll just animate the fight scenes. Uh, does hired. Poppy to pay even have a house mortgage to drop? <laughs> <laughs> he probably does. He's a butcher IRL man. I don't know if he makes big money. <laughs> I, I feel like I feel like you I know, think he does. He does. I think he, it, I it's think like if does. you start doing a job and you become really accustomed to it. it yeah. If you don't know. ReZero is the most popular light novel in the world. Also, most selling. Also, ReZero. Yeah, 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 I know. But like, when also it, when is it comes EX to, novels. Also, is when books. it comes to like, also his video game. Wait, you serious? To, also, his animes that he makes that it, uh, he writes for. Shout out to um, Vivi, Florida yeah. Song. Vivi, Vivi, and Lolly Plain, Lolly Plain Girls. I haven't watched Lolly Plain Girls now. <laughs> I, yeah, I try. Um. I was just going to say that I don't really know, like, yeah, successful in that end means he might have made a decent amount, but when it comes to, like, the cut he gets financially, it no, could I be know. quite low. No, I know. That's how authors could... work in Japan, but still, he... Yeah, because... Um... <laughs> Tepei literally makes so much content that it's impossible for him to not make an adequate amount of money, Yeah, is what I would say. 
He definitely deserves more just than that. Volume like, cool. of it. <laughs> yeah, like how it's extensive. I mean, it's popular around the world as well, especially in Latin countries. Didn't yeah. what re zero? Yeah, does Demon Slayer extremely count popular in Latin countries? For because wasn't Demon Slayer top or is it manga? <laughs> top manga. It's ma top manga. Top yeah. light novel re zero. Yes. Oh, have you heard about that? Recently, um, I don't know if this is true or not, but I saw something on it that um, Isekai anime was banned in Russia or something? Yeah, yes. rip. Well, not really, though. Well, it not, was not, because not it, it promoted reincarnation, the thought of, like, reincarnation and shit. What I, what I read was, yeah, they did do that, but, like, nobody's gonna follow it, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's one of those, it's one of those, we're not gonna enforce it, so it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. Pretty much. But they made a statement. <laughs> they made a statement. We are cunts. <laughs> Basically, this is turning out to be, like, probably the most fighting we'll see in Arc 5. So I'm looking forward. Do a 24-hour stream after university. Why? How about this? How, how about we do, a, we do a little stream where two minutes is a dollar for extension. Yep, two grand. No. <laughs> I'm but getting bitten on flashback. It'll be Capella just Helicopter interviewing people for a relationship advice. No. Uh, and sausage jokes. No. Please don't volunteer me for this. <laughs> House of the Rising I feel Sun like. How's your voice, fight. Jace? Are you okay? It Jace? hurts. Yeah, I imagine. Jace, I literally I'm so, covered you. I'm so for, glad like, we don't have a reading like this. Honestly, like, yeah. Like, <laughs> Jace, I covered yeah, you for two tomorrow. lines and my throat is dead. I don't know how you did all of that. Get you even read those lines. Twice. We should get like smash drunk and try to do that. Kyle's, what what is yes. what is your capella sound yes. like, Kyle's? You can listen to the readings. It's not as good as Jay. Wait, when was it? When did you do that? Um, the very the last line. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Why why did you but have it to was do good. it? Uh, it was good. Because my mic stopped working for oh, some okay, reason. Got it. Yeah, out of nowhere. I waited like a solid thirty seconds, and I was like. Ah, Jace, come back, come back. I'm not gonna lie. I was panicking. Fuck. I was like, should I say someone to pick up? I was like, oh fuck. Oh shit. <laughs> I called Jace twice and I went, fuck it. <laughs> Rip. Fuck! 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 <laughs> fuck! <laughs> but about Why drinking Polo, I'm so all good. <laughs> I don't know. Petra opens the cupboard and like, Ram's special tea is already drank. She's like, fuck! Super's like, language! I learned that from you! <laughs> <laughs> is your Capel voice just uh, Petra, but squeakier? <laughs> Uh, was, I tried to embody all of Capella and like all of Jace. I don't think I, I really could do that. Hard. Embody Capella. I mean, have you? Yeah. Do it, Holo. Uh, oh, come stream, on, you're Polo? a simp. You I'm have stream? so much respect. No, for I'm kind of sad. I'm kind of sad that I wasn't there for one serious chapter um, because I came in a bit late. And uh, like the one where she starts screaming like whore and bitch at <laughs> Amelia. Like, I couldn't you do wanted that. to call me a whore, gold? What the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, well, that's, wow. what, that's, what, that's what the series says. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. You missed the fun. <laughs> Petra is the main antagonist of the series. I can, imagine, oh, like, <laughs> I can imagine Jace's parents when they when, when we're done with the reading. And they go <laughs> yeah, on, they're like, I know, like what, what the hell were you saying? What? Asshole. What whore? Shh. Yeah, I hope you're social. okay, Jace. We have yeah. concerns about these new friends of yours. Yeah, these <laughs> friends of yours are crazy. <laughs> They're gonna be like, how old are these new <laughs> friends of yours? the most mom oh, voice I've ever fucking heard. <laughs> <laughs> I've had practice with that. So. Oh, I, I legit had to, like, stuff Indian myself Victoria. into my closet. <laughs> like... <laughs> I, I imagine. See, Jace is Teoldi's fifth minion. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, my choice. Not... <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Can we just talk about how Teoldi, like <laughs> didn't know what Dub Crew sounded like till a few weeks ago? And yet yeah. she sounds so no, really? no, like two, two days ago, yeah. Yeah. What? I finally Fingers watched it. Yeah, I watched... Uh, we had Crunchyroll, but it expired, so I went and popped it back up, and I went and looked for where Krush was, and the first line out of her mouth, I was like, Oh my gosh! <laughs> Is that so, me? Yeah. So close, it's scary. Don't worry, Kaldi, you're, you're the voice actor. I to lose as something nonsensical as a curse. Oh, How'd shit. you get out of your NDA? Yeah. Wait a second. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, what? If I bend my knee and lose my sword. As a curse? It's left for me. 
curse. <laughs> yeah, cry, Judas. Cry those bitch tears. All right, everyone. Cry, you little bitch knight. Bitch I will knight. fucking cut you with your frost. <laughs> Whoa! Jesus, wow. that's not very knightly. Half devil. Demon. Whoa, I'm better than Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Please, pull it up. Slow down. Down. Not serious? You're not serious. What, what's going I'm on? I'm not calling her a whore. What the fuck? Oh, you might as well be. Come on. Oh, fine. Oh, that, do that's what we for, don't like three toe. That's for another <laughs> stream. But thank you all for Maybe. coming out to this stream. Um, thank you to everybody who was a part of the project today. Very, very crucial chapters in Arc 5. Very nice. I am demonically inspired to write scripts, so I'm going to be doing that for a while. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you are demonically inspired. But yeah, um, if you guys have anything you want to say to the people watching, uh, yeah, we'll do that and then we'll end off. Hey guys, thank you for watching our stream today. If you enjoy it, it crack a like, open up a <laughs> can of cola, and rewatch yeah. it again. Rewatch re 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 all three hours and if give us that this ad video, revenue. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and also become a channel member. Thank you all for coming once again. I hate doing this voice now. Who wants to pick up, please? Uh, oh, I, I got it. Happy, happy birthday, everyone. Again. Thanks for being here. Happy ReZero Day, everyone. Happy ReZero Day, everyone. Happy ReZero Day. I also apologize once again because we are going to be taking a break. I'm heavily debating doing more on a weekday, but I don't know depending on our cast schedule. It, it's really rough on um, GMT people that are in this call. So, yeah, Wolf Yeah, it's, it's heavily dependent on what we can do. Yeah. I, I won't be free next week, really. Like, I have college, and so... It's just going to suck not doing a reading on the weekend, but it's okay. I hope yeah. you guys don't mind I think the two-week break is going to be kind of nice it, that we can get the... It does, because we get so. to yeah, organize yeah. this stuff in 42 a lot. Hopefully... Yeah, easier. Hopefully, yeah. if I can, if I'm motivated enough, um, this week can be dedicated towards catching up with Arc 5 Archives, because I'm only on Chapter 11. Uh, so, yeah. yeah don't, smile. Don't, don't, like, burn yourself out or anything. Oh, like don't that. worry. I've done it before. I can do it again. It's fine. No. 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 Motivation. I'm gonna fucking... I will fly over to Hawaii and shove my foot so fucking far up your arse that you'll never feel again. Please stop. Do I need to get out oh. the mom voice? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Does she need to belittle you like a little minion? <laughs> I'm 22 I'm sad. years I'm of age. I'm just disappointed. But yeah, oh, and you're still a little kid, little shit. All, all right. <laughs> Thank you all for stopping by. It's been a great time, guys. We'll see you in the next live reading. We might do some streams here and there during the week, but we'll see you not this weekend, but next weekend. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Bye-bye. Johnny. Bye. 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 Bye.